Let's start with the session. Uh, first of all, let me tell you the agenda of the session or the practice session we are just going to begin. Uh, that is, we are especially focusing on the standard that is IFRS 9. And uh, uh, why the specific standard IFRS 9, that is financial instrument, why we are going to focus on this standard uh, as because this is one of the most important standard for F7 paper that is financial reporting. Uh, frequently, if we uh, just have a look on the past papers, uh, we are having multiple questions in section A, section B, and even uh, examiner is, uh, is most interested in section C as well. Uh, whenever we have seen the question for final account, there's always an adjustment from IFRS 9, that is financial instrument. It means, uh, if I conclude, the weightage of this standard is around uh, 8 to 10 percent of the paper. How is it possible that 8 to 10 percent because uh, 2 to 3 MCQs are expected uh, from section A and section B and 4 to 6 marks adjustment is most probable for section C. It means uh, if we collectively have a look on, uh, if we collectively have a look of, on this standard, it means that standard will co uh, completely be focusing for 10 marks of your paper. So it means it's one of the most important standard we have uh, for uh, exam point of view for F7 paper. So we'll be focusing on that standard. So let's start with this standard. Uh, first of all, I will give you a basic idea of what is IFRS 9, what is financial instrument, and then inshallah we'll cover up all, this, all these areas of IFRS 9, which are relevant for your papers. Let's start with that one. First of all, uh, if we just have a look of IFRS 9, IFRS 9 deals with, uh, IFRS 9 deals with financial instrument financial instrument, uh, the area of financial instrument. First of all, uh, let's have a look at what is financial instrument. First of all, instrument. Instrument means, what does it mean? Instrument means a piece of paper. Uh, we have different means of, uh, meanings of the instrument. Uh, Sometimes we say that instrument is like a tool, but here we take instrument as a piece of paper, or I can say that instrument means an agreement. It's an agreement, it's a contract. We can say that an agreement or we can say that it's a contract. It's an agreement or we can say that it's a contract. So agreement or instrument, I can say that uh, instrument means an agreement or a contract, uh, a contract between two parties. That means um, it is obvious whenever there's an agreement or whenever there's a contract, the agreement or the contract will be between two parties. There will be two parties in which there's an agreement or a, or a contract. And that contract is for financial terms. That means it is known as what financial instrument, or we can say that a financial agreement between two parties. There is a financial agreement. There is a financial contract between two parties. And uh, in terms of IFRS 9, if we define financial instrument, that is IFRS 9 defines a financial instrument is an agreement or a contract with, uh, which create a financial which create a financial asset, financial asset for one party and a financial liability, financial liability or equity for another party. It means if we have a look on, uh, on the definition by IFRS 9, IFRS 9 defines that financial instrument, that is the financial agreement, an agreement or a contract that creates a financial asset for one party and financial liability or equity for another party. That is known as our financial instrument. Uh, let's discuss this. Uh, let's take an example that how is it possible? For example, if I say that a company, a company, uh, a company borrow, a company borrow money, borrow money <coughs> from B company. A company borrow money from B company. Uh, if we just have a look on this transaction, what A company is doing, A company is borrowing money. That is A company is uh, taking a loan. A company is taking a loan. It means if A company is borrowing uh, for A company, for A company, this would be a liability. Is it? For A company, it would be a liability. And for B company, if B company, uh, it means A company has borrowed the amount, A company definitely is going to pay back this amount in future. 
So it means it's a liability for A company and B company definitely will receive that amount in future. So it means it's an asset for B company. So that is an agreement. That is an agreement. If A company is borrowing the amount from B company, it means it's a contractual agreement. It's an agreement between two parties that is A and B. And for one party, it will create a liability. And for another party, it will create an asset. So it means a financial instrument. It means a financial agreement that will create a liability for one company and an asset for another company. Another, another example we can have. Uh, we can have another example. And that is, for example, a company, a company issued <coughs> debentures. A company issued debentures to B company. A company issued debentures to B company. Now, what is going on? Uh, A company issued debenture. Why they have issued the debenture? Because they have taken an amount, they have borrowed the amount from one company or th from the general public. It means A company borrowed the amount and in that, uh, in, that uh, in that resultant, they have issued debentures. So A company issued debentures. What does it mean? It means A company borrowed the amount and they have issued debentures. So what will be the result of the transaction that a company will pay back this amount after three years or four years. So it means again, it's a liability for the a company and again, B company will receive that amount in future again, an asset for B company. It means again, there is a contractual agreement. Issuance of the venture is a contractual agreement. It's an agreement and which agreement it's a financial instrument. So that instrument is created. That agreement is creating a liability for one company and an asset for another the company let's take another example let's take another example for example a company issued a company issued shares to b company a company has issued shares to b company let's have a look on this transaction that what is going on there that a company issued shares now what is going on a company has taken the amount and in that in, and in that uh, resultant they have issued shares to b company now what is that is it the liability for a company? No, this is not the liability for a company, but yes, that is the equity for a company as the share capital has increased. It means this agreement is creating an equity for one company and an asset for the another company. That is, it's an asset for B company as because B company is investing the amount. So in, in above three examples, we have what we have, what we have seen that B company is making an investment. For example, you are giving a loan, you are giving a loan to another company. So it means you are investing that amount. You are investing in debentures. You are investing in shares. So it means it's an asset in all examples. It, it is an asset for the B company. And in the above two examples, it's a liability for one company. And in the last example, it's an equity. So that is the definition of financial instrument. That financial instrument is an agreement. It's an agreement. It's an agreement between two parties. And for one party, it would be an asset. That is a financial asset. And for another party, this would be the financial liability or equity. In the above two examples, we have taken examples for liabilities. And in the last example, we have taken that the financial asset for one company and equity for another company. So that is the definition which is given by IFRS 9, financial instrument. That what a financial instrument? Financial instrument is basically an agreement between two parties. And for one party, this will create a liability and for another party this will create an asset and there might be a possibility that for one party it would create an equity and for another party this would create a asset this would create an asset so that is the definition of financial instrument now let's move on and uh, let's uh, discuss the scope of this standard and what areas which are involved and what areas which will be tested in fr level that is f7 level let's have a look on it uh, IFRS 9, I'm giving a quick bird's eye view and then inshallah we'll uh, drag down. Uh, first of all, IFRS 9 uh, will cover two areas. That is the financial asset, financial asset. And the another area would be the financial liability, financial asset and financial liability. If I talk about financial asset, what is financial asset? It's nothing but an investment. It's an investment. Uh, if you want to keep it very simple, what is financial asset? Financial asset is nothing but an investment. It means you're making an investment and once you're making an investment, it's an asset for any organization. So it means it's an investment. So uh, if once we will uh, dig down and once we will discuss the financial asset, we'll discuss that investment can be done 
in two types in two categories investment can be done in two categories either the company will be investing in the equity of another entity i repeat financial asset means an investment it means you are making an investment let's say if you are a company definitely you will be making the investment you will be making an investment in another company and once you are making an investment in another company so you would be having two options either you would in you would invest you would invest in equity either you would invest in equity of another company or you will be investing in the debt instrument so it means you will be having just two options either you will be investing in the equity instruments of another entity or company or you will be investing in the debt instruments it means you will be having two options and there will be no third option there it means financial asset is an investment investment might be in the equity instrument or in the debt instrument of another company so we'll be we will be uh, uh, covering this areas that the financial asset that is investment in the equity and investment in the debt instrument now what ifrs 9 will teach you ifrs 9 will teach you that how to account for these investment if you are investing an amount if you are investing in an equity instrument so how to account for this one and if you are investing in debt instrument so how to account for that investment in your financial statement so these areas will be considered or these areas will be learned in this standard uh, okay uh, moving on and i am making a summary at the very start of the session so that we were having a complete idea that what areas we are going to cover and then uh, once we will gonna to record the investment or financial asset through equity instrument ifrs 9 gives two options either you may recognize this investment in equity instrument through fair value fair value through pnl and what is that inshallah we'll gonna to discuss this one soon and you may or there is another option you may recognize this investment as fair value through oci that is fair value through other comprehensive income so there are two possible ways through which you can through which you can record your investment investment in equity always remember we are having an investment in equity if you are having an investment in equity instrument it means you will have three different uh, two different options that is you can recognize your investment through fair value through pnl or fair value through oci and again uh once we will done with this area we will consider the investment in debt instrument and once you are having an investment in debt instrument you will be having three different options you may recognize that investment in three different ways or one of the three different ways that is the amortized cost amortized cost number 2 fair value through oci and third one is the fair value through pnl it means oh, if you are making an investment in the debt instrument of another company it means you will be having three options out of these three options you may recognize your investment in either of this option so how to account for uh, the investment from these three options we will learn in this session inshallah and then once we will done with that we will move on toward, uh, towards the financial liability section how to recognize the financial liability how will recognize this financial liability for this we have one option uh, although ifrs 9 allows two options but in our course it is relevant uh, the relevant uh, area or the relevant pattern or the relevant method is the amortized cost we will recognize the financial liability through amortized cost we will recognize the financial liability through amortized cost and uh, there is another option that is fair value through pnl but that is not relevant for fr exams so we will discuss this one and another area that we will be covering in financial liability is convertible bonds convertible bonds and what are convertible bonds inshallah we will discuss in this session what are convertible bonds so i have just made a summary in front of you uh, let me zoom uh, zoom out this screen so that uh so that you can uh, have a look a brief overlook of the today's session summary uh, we will discuss ifrs 9 that is financial asset and the financial liability uh, financial asset is just like an investment that you have made an investment in another company and once you are making an investment in another company definitely you will be having two options 
either you will be investing uh, in the equity instrument or you will be investing in the debt instrument if you are investing in the equity instrument you will be having two options that is you may recognize this investment fair value through pnl or you may recognize uh, this investment uh, through fair value through oci and another option we will have that is financial asset or the investment in the debt instrument and if we are making an investment in the debt instrument uh, ifrs and uh, allows three treatments that it you may recognize this investment through amortized cost through uh, fair value through oci or you may recognize this one as fair value through pnl so there are three different options and then we will move on towards the financial liability financial liability how to recognize the financial liability we have one option that is amortized cost there is another option that is allowed by frs 9 but we will not be considering this one as this is not important for FR, uh, fr exams uh, yes uh, amortized cost is one of the important area and one of the most important area is convertible bonds and what is that convertible bonds inshallah we will discuss in this session later on uh, so far if there is any concern if is there any question or query from participants so you are most welcome uh, otherwise we will start our journey we will start our session or we will start to practice this area these areas is there any question so far so no questions or no queries so far we will we will be starting the session so let's start with the session so uh, let's start with this one uh, for a uh, financial instrument it is one of the most important and the crucial standard for which ifrs has issued three standards uh, if you talk about property plan and equipment there is only one standard that is is 16 for inventory is 2 uh, for borrowing cost is 23 income tax is 12 normally what we have seen so far that there is specific one standard uh, is issued by the ifrs for majority of the areas but uh, once we talk about financial instrument one of the most important standard for which the accounting standard iesb has issued three standards that is ias 32 ifrs 7 and ifrs 9 IS 32 specifically deals with the presentation that how to account for the financial instrument in your financial statement. IFRS 7 will specifically look after the disclosure requirements, and IFRS 90 uh, deals with the treatment that how to account for the financial instrument. So three specific, three different standards are there, uh, and we will basically be uh, uh, focusing on IFRS 9, that is. the financial instrument which will be dealing with the accounting treatment that is how to account for the financial uh, instrument so again uh, let's have a definition which we have already discussed the financial instrument is an any contract that is an agreement i said instrument means a piece of paper or we can say that instrument means an agreement it's an agreement it's a contract between two parties so financial instrument is a financial contract between two parties that give rise to the financial asset for one entity and financial liability or equity for another entity which we have discussed in our introduction that uh, it may be the liability or equity for one company but the asset for another company why asset because that company is making an investment and if you are making an investment it means it will be an asset for the organization now definition for the financial asset first of all we will be starting with the financial asset uh, financial is asset is any is uh, financial asset is any asset that is a cash it may either be a cash and uh, for exam point of view please note that find the definition of the financial asset is very important uh, most of the time uh, the students give uh, feedback that in mcqs uh, or in ot's that is section a or section b examiner uh, Uh, just give a definition of financial asset which of the following define financial asset and that definition is given in the options you need to select the correct option so you need to memorize this definition it's very important for exam part of you uh, examiner may ask uh, the definition in ot or ot cases 
so you need to memorize this definition it's a contractual right financial asset is basically a contractual agreement or right a right to receive cash it means you will receive an amount you will receive some profit from that investment or you will receive your amount of investment after four years or five years so it's a contractual right to receive cash a contractual right to exchange financial assets or liabilities and equity instrument of another entity it means you have purchased ordinary shares of another company examples of financial assets are trade receivables options investment in equity shares and options are not the part of your fr exams so we will not be discussing this one investment in equity shares means you have purchased ordinary shares of another company moving on uh, what is financial liability financial liability is any liability that is a contractual obligation again it's an agreement in which you have made an agreement or contract that you will pay back this amount after a certain period of time to deliver cash on another financial asset to another entity that you will deliver this cash after few after a specific period of time to exchange financial assets or liabilities with another uh, entity again the def definition of financial liability is quite important and you need to memorize this definition as it is very important uh, examples of financial liabilities are trade payables debenture loans debenture payables or already payable preference shares moving on uh, first of all we will starting with the financial asset that is equity instrument again i repeat what is financial asset it's an investment you have made an investment in another company and once you are making an investment you will be having two options either you will invest in the equity instrument that is shares as it it means you will be investing in the equity instrument that is shares of another company or you will be investing in the debt instrument first of all we are focusing on the financial asset that is investment investment where investment in equity instrument that is shares what does it mean if you are purchasing the shares of another company so how to account for these investments in your financial statement so let's have a look we have two options ifrs has given two options either we will recognize this investment through fair value pnl or we will recognize fair value through oci we have two different options is there any difference yes sir what is the difference i have summarized this one for you uh, what is the difference if you are, first of all we need to sum up we need to conclude this one that fair value through pnl fair value through pnl is a default assumption always remember it's a default assumption what does it mean if nothing is mentioned uh, if the question states that company has invested or company has purchased ordinary shares of x company and if nothing is stated it means it's a default assumption that we are following the fair value through pnl there is a question why fair value through pnl or when fair value through pnl is applied or when company uses the fair value through pnl company uses the fair value through uh, fair value through pnl once the company has decided to purchase that shares for trading purposes what does it mean if you have invested the amount in the equity of another company for what for which intention if you have invested that amount that you will trade the shares you will sell the shares once you were, once you will get the good price so it means you will adopt fair value through pnl but if you have purchased the shares of another company for holding purpose that is you will hold the investment for long term purpose it means you will follow fair value through oci so always remember if examiner has given a hint that the company purchase ordinary shares of x company for trading purpose it means you are going to apply fair value through pnl or if come if question or examiner states that company has purchased ordinary shares of another company for holding purpose it means we are going to apply fair value through oci number one number two if it is written default assumption default assumption it means we are going to apply fair value through pnl if question states that alternative alternative treatment it means we will apply fair value through oci so these are the indicators through which you need to identify whether we need to record this investment or we need or we need to measure this investment through fair value oci or pnl so we need to uh, first of all identify this one by reading out this question we will first identify that whether to opt the fair value through pnl or oci so now let's differentiate what is the differentiate what is the difference between these two always remember if i have purchased or bought the shares of uh, one company for example uh, unilever uh, unilever company if i bought the shares of unilever company for example the share price of the unilever company when i bought that shares on 1st of april 2021 2021 if i bought the shares of unilever company for dollar uh, 2.5 per share 
if that is the share price today when i bought this shares and let's say i bought 5000 shares uh, for 2.5 dollar per share it means that will make uh, that will make 5000 into 2.5 that will make 12500 dollar i made an investment of 12500 dollar once an accounting period will end that is on 31st december on 31st december just give me a uh, answer that whether the share price of that company or the unilever company would be same as it was on 1st of april no absolutely not absolutely not on 1st april the share price of that company was 2.5 dollar per share but on 31st december this would not be the case this would not be the case the share price would definitely change either it would increase or it would decrease for let's say uh, the share price on 31st december 2021 would be 3.5 dollar per share it means 3.5 dollar per share and i've made or uh, i have purchased 5000 ordinary shares it means the total amount would be 5000 multiplied by 3.5 per share that would make 17500 what does it mean on first on first april when i made an investment the investment was around 12.12500 dollar and on 31st december that is at the end of the accounting period now the investment the market value of that investment is 17500 it means there is a difference of 5000 dollar it means there is a gain there is a gain on investment the market value of investment has increased so i need to account for this gain so how i'm going to record this gain either to classify or to record this gain into pnl so there are two options if we are following fair value through pnl it means we will recognize this fair value gain directly into the pnl that is the value increase in the value of investment investment will increase investment debit and pnl that is gain will be credited it means directly recording that gain to pnl another option what we have another option that is if you don't want to recognize this gain in pnl it means you'll be following the fair value through oci and when uh, we will follow fair value through oci if we are purchase if we have purchased these shares or if we have bought this shares for holding purposes it means we will not recognize the gain or loss we will not recognize that particular gain or loss in pnl although we will recognize that gain or loss in oci and we all know that what is oci oci means other comprehensive income and in other comprehensive and we all know that other comprehensive income is the part of your pnl once your pnl is completed the other component or the additional area which we include that is oci and oci what is recorded in oci which items are recorded in oci always remember oci records the unrealized gain or losses i repeat in oci what we will record we will record unrealized gain or losses so ifrs 9 says that the uh, if you are following the fair value through oci what does it mean you have bought these shares for long term purposes and if you have bought these shares for long term purposes it means any gain any fair value gain it's not a disposal gain it's a fair value gain increase in the market value that is a fair value gain or decrease in the market value that is fair value loss any fair value gain or loss will be recognized in oci as an unrealized gain or loss and hence it will not be recognized in pnl although if you have uh, recorded that investment through fair value through pnl what does it mean you want to recognize this investment you want to recognize this investment as a fair value through pnl because you want to sell this investment in a very short term in a very short term in a short period of time definitely you're going to sell this investment so we'll recognize through fair value through pnl so there is a uh, classification ifrs 9 uh, gives you a criteria you just match the criteria and adopt one of the uh, method which is given by ifrs 9 another thing is transaction cost what is the transaction cost whenever we buy shares uh, if you have any uh, if any one of you have invested in shares of another company you have an idea that you need to appoint an agent a broker or a brokerage firm that will be investing on behalf of you uh, it means that would be an agent who will be purchasing shares for you so it means definitely they will be charging some commission and that commission is known as what transaction cost uh, and these commissions are charged on a transaction basis uh, whenever you buy shares there will be a transaction cost um, in pakistan there is 0.05% 
Uh, so it means whenever you will buy shares, you will have to pay that transaction cost. And once you are paying this transaction cost, if you are following fair value PNL, it means that transaction cost will be expensed out. It mean it means it will be recorded in PNL. We will not capitalize that transaction cost. But yes, if you are following the fair value through OCI, it means you will recognizing that. Uh, transaction cost or you will be capitalizing that transaction cost in the value of investment. Let's say if you have made an investment of 12,500 and you have made a transaction cost of $500, it means your total amount of investment would be $13,000. It means you will capitalize that transaction cost. So you need to be very conscious. You, do, you need to be very alert. If the question uh, if the question require fair value through OCI, so it means uh, if there is any transaction cost, you need to capitalize in your amount of investment. Again, the third point is disposal gain or loss. If you have sold out that investment, if you have sold out the shares, if you have disposed of that shares, definitely you'll be having some gain or losses. For example, if you bought that shares for $12,500 and then you sold out that shares for $15,000, it means you are having a gain on disposal to, uh, uh, of about $2,500. So how to recognize that gain or loss? You will be recognizing that gain or loss in PNL uh, either you are following fair value through PNL or OCI. It means there is no discrimination in that. If there is no difference in that. You will need to, you will recognize that gain or loss on disposal in PNL. Either you follow the OCI or PNL approach. So it means there is no difference in that. And again, last one, uh, definitely you are making an investment in another company, the shares of another company. And if you are share, uh, if you have appointed or if you have purchased the shares of another company, you are the owner, you are the shareholder. And if you are the shareholder, you will definitely getting dividend from that company. And if you are getting dividend, if you're earning the amount of dividend income, so you will be recognized, you will be recognized that dividend income in PNL directly in PNL, and again there is no difference in these two approaches. So that is the summary. And once we will start to uh, uh, to solve the questions, and we will recognize this, uh, we will be uh, focusing on these rules that transaction cost, either the transaction cost to be capitalized or not. We will need to recognize this one. And again, fair value gain or losses. How to account for the fair value gain or losses? We need to consider at least these two points. These are, these are the very important point with respect to financial asset equity instrument. So let's start with the preparation. With let's start and let's practice out. Uh, let's practice out the financial asset. Uh, first of all, there's a question. One, it's an MCQ. Uh, we will definitely practice different uh, Questions and the question which I have adopted uh, that is from the different accountancy background. That is, few questions are from ACC study tax, few questions are from past papers, and there are certain questions which are from other accountancy body. That is, ICAP Institute of Chartered Accountant of Pakistan. So I have adopted some questions from uh, the different accounting bodies. So inshallah, we are going to practice these type of questions in our, in this session. Uh, I just need an in, uh, answer from you, uh, you guys are participating. I need the answer of this question and MCQ uh, that what is the default classification of an equity instrument? Please participate and uh, let me know the answer of this MCQ. What will be the correct option for this MCQ? Please participate. I want you all to participate so that uh, I could know that whether you are getting your points or not. Okay, the majority of the uh, majority of the says that the answer for this question is A and A is the correct answer. Absolutely, A is the correct answer. Reason is, uh, I have, uh, as we have discussed, we have discussed that the default classification for the measurement of equity instrument is PNL. That is fair value through PNL. We have seen that uh, fair value through PNL is for trading purposes. And we have also seen that uh, default classification is fair value through PNL. So the correct answer would be fair value through PNL. So let's move on to another question. Uh, that is the question which I have adopted from uh, ICAP, that is Institute of Chartered Accountant of Pakistan. Uh, let's read out the question and try to solve this question. And let's see uh, how an examiner can ask question from this topic. Copper Limited has purchased an investment of uh, 15,000 shares. First of all, you need to identify whether the question is for financial asset or financial liability. We have discussed in the start of the session uh, the question might be from financial asset and financial liability. Now, how to identify if you are making an investment, as we have seen the word that purchase an investment, it means company is making an investment. And once the company is making an investment, always remember there is a question of financial asset. 
Now you need to identify another thing. Investment. If you are making an investment, you are making an investment where either you are making an investment in equity instrument or the debt instrument. So what is saying? Can Copper Limited has purchased an investment of fifteen thousand ordinary shares. It means it's a question of financial asset equity instrument. And once it's a question of financial asset equity instrument, so you need to uh, you need to just have a flashback that we have two different options: either to recognize this investment as a fair value through OCI or fair value through PNL. Now let's read out the question: What examiner is requiring or what examiner wants that on first August two thousand and sixteen, at a cost of sixty five dollar each, Copper Limited in Limited intend oh, sorry Copper Limited intend to sell these shares in a short term? Let me know, please. Participate whether this investment should be recognized through fair value through PNL or fair value through OCI. Please let me know whether the investment should be recognized as fair value through PNL or fair value through OCI. G. G. Yes, I need your participation, everyone. Please, I need your participation. Whether we need there, whether there's a need to recognize this investment. Yes, we need to recognize this investment. Fair value three P and L. How? How we did? How we did? How we identified this one? Because the shares are for trading purposes. These are held for a short term basis. So it means we need to recognize this investment fair value through P and L. That is holding them for trading purposes. Okay. Transaction cost on the purchases amounted to fifteen thousand dollar, and what we have seen in the summary that if you are recognizing this investment fair value through PNL, it means any transaction cost which we are paying will be recognized in PNL and will not be capitalized. So it means there is a transaction cost of fifteen thousand dollar as at the year end, that is on thirtieth September two thousand and sixteen. These shares are now worth seventy seven point five dollar each. It means. When we purchase that investment, the investment uh, when we purchase these shares, the price of per share was sixty-five dollar each, and now the price of the shares is seventy-seven point five dollar each. What is the now requirement? What is the requirement of the examiner? What is the gain on this investment during the year ended thirtieth September two thousand and sixteen, and where in the financial statement it will be recognized? So we need to calculate the gain or loss uh, on fair value. Definitely, we are not going to dispose of these shares, so we are going to calculate the fair value gain or loss. So let's calculate the fair value gain or loss. Uh, we are making an uh, investment. Let's calculate the amount of investment. Fifteen uh, thousand shares were bought for fifteen thousand shares were bought for sixty-five dollar each. That is fifteen thousand multiplied by sixty-five. Uh, the amount would be fifteen thousand multiplied by sixty-five. Uh, this would be around nine lakh seventy five thousand dollar, nine lakh seventy five thousand dollar, and at thirty first December, at thirty first December two thousand and sixteen. Now the value of the shares price per share. Okay, one more thing. Uh, will uh, we capitalize this transaction cost? Please give me the answer. Are we going to capitalize? Are we going to capitalize this transaction cost? No, we are not going to capitalize this transaction cost as we are following the fair value through PNL. So definitely, we are going to expense this out. So now the market value is seventy-seven point five per share, and number of shares we are having that is fifteen thousand. So the fifteen thousand into seventy-seven point five per share. That this will this will make a double one. Six two five double zero. So uh, we when uh, when we made an investment on first April, the amount of investment was nine lakh seventy five thousand. And today, the market value or the fair value of these investment is double one six two five double zero. So there is a difference of uh, there is a difference of one lakh eighty seven thousand five hundred. There is a fair value gain. And one 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 more thing. Fair value gain is one eighty seven five hundred. So uh, the fair value gain, uh, how how we are going to recognize this one? Either we are going to record record this fair value gain in OCI. Whether we will recognize this fair value gain in OCI? No, we are going to recognize this fair value gain in P and L as we are following. The PNL that is fair value through PNL, so definitely we are going to recognize. Uh, we are going to recognize this fair value gain 
in P and L. So let's have a look on the answer. So what will be the correct answer? What will be the correct option for this one? What will be the correct option for this one? That is the option B, that is fair value. Fair value uh, gain will be recognized in PNL. That is 1,87,500. I hope it is clear. Okay, now let's move on to another question. That is question number three. Uh, another question uh, we are going to practice. Gold limited draft statement of financial position as at 31st March 2018. Shows financial asset. Uh, now, examiner has given you a clear identification. It's not a question for financial liability, but it's a question for financial asset at fair value through PNL. Another, another good news for you that examiner has directly intimated that we are going to follow fair value through PNL and not the OCI. With a caring amount of twelve point five million dollar, it means there is an investment of five twelve point five million dollar at first April two thousand and seventeen. These financial assets are held in fund whose value changes directly in proportion to a specific market index. And as we all know that uh, whenever we make an investment in shares, there is a market index, there's a points, there's a market points. We all, uh, we, we normally listen uh, that the market uh, stock exchange increased by 12,000 points, 500 points, 200 points. So it means there is a market index. Uh, and uh, in this question, we are going to learn that how to account for the gain or how to account for the change or how to calculate the gain through market index. So on 1st April, the relevant index was 1200. It means when you bought that shares, the market index was 1200. And at 31st March, that is the accounting year and the market index is 1296. Now, the question arises, what we are going to calculate, we need to calculate the amount of gain or loss should be recognized. It means you need to recognize the fair value gain. You need to recognize the fair value gain or loss. You need to recognize the fair value gain or loss. Is there anyone who can calculate? Is there anyone who can calculate and participate in this question? First of all, please try this. Please try this one. Try this question and let me know uh, that what will be the answer of this question. Gain of 1 million will be recognized in PNL. Good one, good one, excellent. Perfect. First of all, we need to recognize that whether the market index is increasing or decreasing. If you have a look uh, on this one, uh, the market index was 1200 and now the market index has increased to 1 to 9. It means the market index is increasing. It means definitely we will be having a gain. We will having a gain. So let's identify the difference of these two. That means uh, 1296 minus 1200. There is a gain of index is 96. First of all, let's calculate the percentage of that gain. That what percentage will it make? Uh, that means 96 divided by base that is 1200. So what percentage are we getting? That is 96 divided by 1200 96 divided by 1200 that means it will make eight percent it means there's a gain of eight percent and definitely if you're having a gain in market index so normally we'll definitely have a gain in our share price and the share price on first april was 12.5 million dollar and we are having a gain of eight percent so it means on 12.5 12.5 multiply by eight percent that means we are having a gain of one million dollar that is the fair value gain that is the fair value gain of one million dollar and the um, uh, requirement was that is to calculate the gain or loss we calculated the gain or loss that is the fair value gain of one million and another question is uh, where we are going to record this gain uh, this gain will be recorded in PNL as we are following the fair value through PNL approach to answer would be so answer would be the fair value through PNL, and we'll be recognizing the gain of one million dollar. Okay, uh, let me ask another question from this uh, from uh, from this scenario. Uh, what will be the what will be the amount of investment? Uh, listen, uh, listen to me very carefully. What will be the amount of investment to be reported in balance sheet as on thirty first December two thousand and eighteen? Give me the answer of this question. Give me the answer of this question. What will be the amount of what will be the amount of investment to be reported in balance sheet as at 31st March 2018? Everyone, please participate. 
please participate i need your participation i need your participation what will be the amount of investment to be reported in balance sheet yes i need your participation everyone please participate what will be the amount of investment what will be the amount of investment to be reported in balance sheet on 31st march 2000 exactly it would be 13.5 million why uh, the investment that was recorded 12.5 million and we are having a gain of 1 million it means now the amount of investment that will be reported in balance sheet would be 13.5 million so there could be two options there there could be two uh, questions there could be two requirements number one the amount of fair value gain or loss which we have calculated that is 1 million dollar and the other question could be the what will be the amount of investment to be reported in balance sheet as on 31st march 2018 okay let's move on to question number 4 again we have a question that is diamond limited company purchased 10000 shares on 1st september 2014 making the election to use the alternative treatment is there anyone who could identify that which uh, uh which uh, uh, method we are going to opt in this question yes i need your participation everyone is there any clear indicator from examiner that which method we need to adopt for this scenario yes it's fair value through oci absolutely why because there is a clear there is clearly mentioned in the question that the company has decided or elected elected the alternative treatment always remember if there is alternative treatment it means we are talking about fair value through oci and if uh, there is a written a default assumption if uh, default treatment is reported if default treatment the word default treatment is used it means we are going to use fair value through pnl so now let's recall let's recall we are making an investment yes sir we are purchasing shares we are making an investment in equity yes we are purchasing shares and ordinary shares of another company so we have two options fair value through pnl fair value through oci in this question examiner has clearly identified we are going to use alternative scheme that is we are going to follow fair value through oci now what is the what is the summary of that one just recall, just recall this one uh, there are two differences number one any fair value gain or loss will be reported in oci and number two transaction cost will be capitalized so let's have a look on this question the data of this question the share cost uh, the share cost rupees 35 each it means the share price of uh, per share uh, the share the uh, the price per share is 35 each transaction cost associated with the purchase were 5000 rupees it means uh, once you are purchasing the shares you have in, uh, you have uh, incurred a transaction cost of 5000 at 31st december at 31st december 2014 the shares are trading at rupees 45 each it means on 31st december that is at the end of the accounting period the market price of the shares was 45 rupees each what is the requirement uh what is the gain to be recognized on these share for the year ended 31st december and obviously we are not disposing of these shares so we need to calculate the fair value gain or loss uh, so fair value gain or loss how we are going to recognize this one first of all we will calculate the amount of investment how we are going to calculate the amount of investment number of shares purchased that is 10000 shares were purchased 10000 shares were purchased and the market price per share is 35 rupees each 35 rupees each that means 10000 multiply by 35 that will make obviously 3 lakh 50000 rupees 3 lakh 50000 rupees and uh, we have incurred a transaction cost of don't forget to capitalize this transaction cost of 5000 it means the total amount of investment would be 3 lakh 55000 and now the market value today the market value of these shares is 45 rupees each that is 10000 shares multiply by 45 rupees each will make 4 lakh 50000 it means the investment is 3 lakh 55000 and the market price is 4 lakh 50000 this will make a gain of 95000 rupees this will make a gain of 95000 rupees and now let me know whether the gain will be recorded in pnl so let me know everyone whether this gain will be recorded in pnl no this gain will be recorded this gain will not be recorded in pnl although this gain will be recorded in oci that is the other comprehensive income 
other comprehensive income we are going to recognize this gain in oci that is other comprehensive income so correct answer for this question would be option c is it clear to everyone Now let's have a look on the question number five. And uh, in this question, uh, we will now expand uh, our dimension and we are going to discuss a few other areas. Uh, in February, 2008, a company purchased $20,000 one ordinary shares at a price of $4 per share. It means company is purchasing. Again, company is purchasing shares. It means company is making an investment. It's a question of financial asset. And what the company is purchasing, that is the ordinary shares. It means financial asset, equity instrument. Again, we have two different options, fair value through PNL and fair value through OCI. Now let's have a look. The share price was $4 per share. Transaction costs were $2,000 at the year end. And then on 31st December 2008, uh, 20XA, these shares were trading at $5.50. A dividend of 20 cents per share was received on 30th September 20X8. Show the financial statement extracts at 31st December 20X8 relating to this investment on the basis that we need to account for this uh, question or we need to account for this investment from both the approaches. First of all, we will be assuming the shares were bought for trading. It means we will be using fair value through PNL. That is conditions for fair value through OCI have not been met. And then in next requirement, in that scenario, in next case, we will uh, solve this question fair value through OCI. So first of all, let's uh, uh, solve the question from with the requirement fair value through PNL. Fair value through PNL. So how are we going to recognize this one? Uh, if we have bought the shares for trading purposes, it means any transaction cost will not be capitalized. So let's have a look. Uh, what, uh, what, what was the amount of investment? 20,000 shares were bought. 20,000 shares were bought. 20,000 shares were bought. For dollar for each, uh, this means that eighty thousand dollar would be the amount of investment. That is the amount of investment is eighty thousand dollar. And now, what is the market price or the market value of the shares? The market value of the shares is five point five zero dollar per share. That means twenty thousand multiply by. 5.50 20,000 multiply by 5.5 that will make one lakh ten thousand dollar it means there's a clear gain there's a clear gain of uh, fair value gain of thirty thousand dollar there's a fair value gain of thirty thousand dollar and if we are having a fair value gain of thirty thousand dollar and we are using what fair value through pnl approach it means uh, we will recognize this fair value gain in PNL. So let's prepare the extract of financial statement. Uh, if we just prepare an extract of financial statement, so how are we going to prepare this one? Uh, what if, if we are preparing PNL? In PNL, what item we will be recognizing? Number one, we'll be recognizing the transaction cost. We'll be expensing out. We'll be expensing out this one as we are following the fair value through PNL. So any uh, any transaction cost which is incurred uh, will be expensed out. The transaction cost. Uh, was two thousand dollars. So first of all, we will be recognizing transaction cost or the expense in PNL two thousand dollar, and we are receiving an amount of dividend. And what we have said, what we have discussed in the start of the lecture, say any amount of dividend you are receiving from the shares in respect of the shares will be recognized in PNL. Either you are following the OCI approach or the PNL approach. So we'll be recognizing this dividend income in PNL and the amount of dividend. Uh, that was 20 cents per share and we have got 20,000 shares that is 20,000 multiply by 0 0.2 20,000 multiply by 0 0.2 that will make 4,000 dividend income it means uh, the net amount if we'll be reporting in PNL would be 4,000 as an income and 2,000 as an expense it means the net amount will be charged uh, sorry, that net amount will be credited. That would be recognized as an income. Uh, that would be two thousand. 
So examiner may ask you a question, uh, giving, uh, having said this, the whole information, having given this, the whole information, and the examiner will be requiring that what amount to be recognized in PNL. So we'll be saying that uh, the net amount recognizing in PNL would be two thousand as an income uh, that will be recognizing as an income. So this was and uh, definitely. Uh, oh, so one more thing. One more thing. We have uh, we have skipped one more thing. That is, we forgot to recognize this fair value gain as well. We will be recognizes. We will be recognizing this fair value gain. This fair value gain of around that is thirty thousand dollar. Thirty thousand dollar. That means thirty thousand. The fair value gain four thousand. The dividend income thirty four thousand minus two thousand. That is the transaction cost. So net amount will be recognizing in PNL would be thirty two thousand. So always remember in fair value through PNL, any fair value gain will be recognized in PNL. So net amount will be recognized in PNL would be thirty two thousand. So this question was solved through fair value through PNL, and now we will solve the same scenario. That is fair value through OCI. Is it clear so far? Yes, everyone. Is it clear so far? We'll solve this question uh, now from fair value through OCI approach. Fair value through OCI. Let's start with this one. B. Fair value through OCI. First of all, we'll calculate the amount of investment. Is there a need to calculate the amount of investment? Yes, there is a need. Although we have calculated the amount of investment that is eighty thousand, but we know that in fair value through OCI, transaction cost, transaction, any transaction cost, any transaction cost incurred will be capitalized. That is two thousand dollar. That means the total amount of investment. Would be eighty two thousand dollar. The total amount of investment would be eighty two thousand dollar. That is the investment made by the company. So now let's see uh, the market value. The market value at the end of the year was one lakh ten thousand dollar. We have already calculated. So it means the gain. Uh, the gain will be recognized for one lakh ten thousand minus eighty two. That is the twenty eight thousand. Twenty eight thousand gain. Twenty-eight thousand fair value gain will be recognized, but this gain will be recognized in OCI. Why? Because we are following the fair value through OCI approach. It means any fair value gain, any fair value gain will be recognized in OCI. So there will be a gain of twenty-eight thousand will be recognized in OCI. Now let's prepare the extracts of the financial statement. How are we gonna to prepare the extract of the financial statement? That is, we are going to prepare the PNL. And in PNL, uh, in PNL, what uh, items will be getting? Either we will get transaction cost. We will record the, either we will record the transaction cost in PNL. Let me know whether we will record the transaction cost in PNL. No, we are not going to record the transaction cost in PNL. Why? Because we have capitalized that transaction cost in the value of investment. So we are not going to record the transaction cost in PNL. Okay. So either uh, whether we are going to record the dividend income. Whether we will record dividend income, only dividend income will be recorded. Exactly, dividend will be recorded. We will record the amount of dividend income. We will record the amount of dividend income, and the amount of dividend income was four thousand. This will be recognized in PNL. And we all know that uh, once your profit or net profit is calculated, or the profit after tax is calculated, we add another component that is known as what OCI. OCI and we are going to record this OCI that is fair value gain in OCI amounting to rupees or amounting to twenty eight thousand dollar. So this is gonna to be the extract of the income statement or the financial statement. Is it clear to everyone? Can you just clearly identify the difference of uh, the uh, fair value through PNL and the fair value through OCI? How to account for the investment in fair value through PNL and how to account for the investment in fair value through OCI and the major differences around this? Is it clear to everyone so far? So let's sum up uh, what we have done. It uh, what we have done. uh if you have a look on the summary which we have prepared at the start of the session uh we were discussing financial assets uh, that is the investment and we have discussed successfully the investment in equity instrument that is the fair value through pnl and as well as the fair value through oci now we will moving towards the investment in the debt instrument what if we are making the investment no no what if we are purchasing the debt instrument of another entity and what are those debt instrument it could either be a debenture 
uh, we might purchasing the debenture of another company we might purchasing the loan notes of another company we might purchasing the preference shares of another company all these are the debenture or the debt instruments these are the debt instruments it means we will be purchasing the loan notes we will be purchasing the debenture or the preference shares of another entity and how to account for this one let's have a look uh, in our session and let's move on with this one so financial asset now we are moving towards the debt instrument so what is the definition and how can we account for this one an investment in the debt instrument that is a bond it may either be a redeemable preference shares or it could be a loan notes can be recognized through there are three options available that is the amortized cost fair value through pnl and fair value through oci again fair value through pnl is our default assumption again fair value through pnl is a default assumption and uh, uh, when to recognize and when to adopt this method there is a criteria given in uh, ifrs 9 and what is that criteria let's discuss this one let's discuss this one that what is the criteria to adopt either of these options so ifrs 9 states that if you have purchased the debenture loan notes or the preference share for holding purpose what does it mean holding purpose what does it mean the holding purpose that you have purchased a debenture for five years and if you wish and if you intend to hold this debenture for five years and you will take the benefit of that debenture after five years what does it mean what is the debenture what is the benefit from the debenture that you will be taking the amount of amount of principal and you will be the person who will be taking the amount of interest for example if i have purchased a debenture if i have purchased a debenture from another company it means I have invested the amount of five lakh dollar. Let's say, let's say five lakh dollar, and after five years, I'll be getting that amount. It means whatever my principal amount is, I'll be getting that amount along with the interest, along with the interest. So, if you are intended to take the amount of principal, that is the principal amount along with the interest, so you will be following the amortized cost. It means the objective of or whenever you uh, when you will recognize your investment through amortized cost when your intention is to hold when your intention is to hold that investment for the mature till the maturity date it means you need to recognize this investment as a amortized cost if you're not willing if you're not willing to sell this investment if you're not willing to dispose of this investment so it means you need to recognize this investment through amortized cost but if you wish if you wish to hold this investment if you want to hold this investment but but what you have decided if i will get a chance or if i will get a good uh, good offer of or if i will get, if, if i will get a good opportunity or I, if i will get a good market value so i may sell this instrument i may sell or i may dispose of this investment so if you wish to hold i repeat if you wish to hold your intention is to hold but what you have decided i might sell this investment if i receive a good offer so it means you need to adopt the fair value through oci but the default assumption is if you have bought this debt instrument for the sake of trading you have no intention to hold this one so ifrs says that if you have hold or if you have purchased this investment exclusively for sell so need to recognize this investment as fair value through p and l so this intention uh, as i'm talking about the intention this intention ifrs says that this intention is known as what business model you need to identify the business model what is that business model is the business model is to hold then go for amortized cost is the business model is to hold but if good offer is received you may sell then go for oci but if your business model is to that is to sale that is to trade it means you need to recognize this investment as fair value through oci so let's uh, have a look on this so default categories again fair value through pnl but uh, one thing uh, one thing i need to identify as inshallah i will clear this one in uh, questions if in the question you are not given with the you are not provided with the fair value we will discuss inshallah uh, if you are not provided with the fair value if the examiner has not given you the fair value so you need to account for this investment as amortized cost as many students face this problem they are confused regarding this one so whether to opt the amortized cost if the question is silent what we need to do 
I repeat, if the fair value is not given, if the market value of the debenture is not given in the question, so you need to account for this investment as amortized cost. You need to account for this investment as amortized cost. Why? Usually, most of the company, most of the organizations use amortized cost. Most of the organization use amortized cost, use amortized cost for investment in that instrument. Why? Why? Just because as we all know that the market value of debentures, loan notes or the preference shares do not increase or decrease uh, 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 in a very usual way. If we see the market price of the debenture or the loan notes or the preference shares, they do not change on a daily basis. Yes, they do, but you know, on a very rare situation, on occasional basis. So many of the organization, many of the organizations, when they buy, when they bought, when they make an investment in that instrument, their intention is to hold, that is they want the benefit through interest and principal. So it means, it means whenever the company make an investment in debentures, in that instrument, their intention in 90% cases, their intention is to hold, they will collect all the benefits that is the principal interest from this debenture. So normally, uh, or practically speaking, normally company recognizes these kind of investment through amortized cost. So let's move on. Uh, I need the answer of this question of this uh, scenario. Uh, please uh, make it and let me know. Uh, the classification that is there are three different independent scenarios that is a limited a limited hold bonds for the purpose of collecting contractual cash flows to maturity how to account for this investment b limited b limited hold in, uh, bonds for the purpose of collecting contractual cash flows but sells them on the market value when prices are favorable how to account for this investment C limited by bonds to trade in them and how to account for this investment. Please let me know everyone. Everyone, I need your participation. Let me know that how independent cases, how these independent cases will be recognized. Yes, I need the participation from everyone. Do participate in this question. A limited company, how a limited company will account for this investment? How a limited company will account for this investment? Yes, exactly. Exactly. The correct answers are coming. That is a limited will recognize this investment as a a limited will recognize this investment as an amortized cost because the intention is to collect all benefit that is all the contractual cash flows that is the principal and interest till maturity it means they will recognize this investment as amortized cost b limited will recognize this investment as a fair value through oci and c limited will recognize this investment as fair value through pnl as their clear intention is to sell this investment so let's uh, check out the answer that is the correct answer is that is the correct answer is A limited will measure the bond at amortized cost. B limited must measure the bond at fair value through OCI and C limited company will measure the bond at fair value through PNL. These kind of short MCQs are expected in your exam. So you need to be mentally prepared for these kind of theoretical questions. Examiner may have a drag and drop options. That is uh, the uh, same kind of model is given. Uh, and that question which I have uh, shown you, that is from the ICAP, that is Institute of Chartered Accountant of Pakistan, and that is the past paper question. And you may also fa uh, face these kind of MCQs in your exams. You need to be prepared for this one. So now let's move on. And the summary for this one, uh, we have already seen the summary for uh, the financial asset equity instrument. And now we are having a summary of financial asset debt instrument. Now, what is the summary behind it? Uh, any amount of interest income will be recognized in PNL. First of all, uh, right now, at the very beginning stage, we will be focusing on these two areas right now. What are the others? Um, uh, if we talk about interest income, disposal, gain or loss, reclassification, balance sheet, table start with, what are these items? I will tell you later on. But first of all, uh, we need to consider, we need to memorize, we need to learn three points at least. That is fair value gain or loss number two 
transaction cost and number 3 disposal gain or losses that where we are going to record these one if you are following the amortized cost it means it means a fair value there will be no fair value gain or loss no gain or loss why because we do not measure the investment on market value and if we are not measuring the investment on market value on the fair value it means there will be no gain there will be no loss so so in amortized cost there will be no gain there will be no loss number 2 if we are having any transaction cost so we are going to capitalize this transaction cost in amortized cost and if we are having any gain or loss on disposal definitely if we have any bonds and debentures and we are selling off these debentures or bonds or we are disposing of that investment so any gain or loss will be recognized in pnl and that is common in all three categories all three it is common in all three categories however the transaction cost Uh, is capitalized in amortized cost as well as in fair value through oci but in fair value through pnl it will be expensed out any gain or loss there will be no gain or loss in amortized cost but there will be a gain or loss in fair value through oci and fair value through P fair value through pnl because we are measuring our investment at fair value or the market value and once we are measuring our investment at the fair value or the market value definitely there will be any gain or loss so the gain or loss Uh, uh, the gain or loss in fair value will be recognized in OCI. In OCI, if we are measuring the investment through OCI, and or the gain or loss will be recognized in PNL if we are using the fair, fair value through PNL approach. And what are the rest of the other items are? We'll discuss in next questions. So now let's decide the rules. How we are going to record the investment through amortized cost? Please don't forget the agenda. What we are doing? What we are doing right now? And what where we are? Where we are, let's recap. We are now in the financial asset side. We are making an investment in debt instrument, and we are recording the debt instrument by using the amortized cost. Are we clear on this? Are we clear on this? You need to be very concentrated. You need to focus this one. You should not be deviated from your agenda. That what we are doing. You should. It's a lengthy standard. It's a very long standard. There are so many things. There are so many accounting treatments. But if you are you are successful, you are successful if you have summarized this standard. So you need to make a summary of this one. You need to summarize this standard. And once you have done it, I bet you you will be the winner of this standard. So you need to summarize this standard. So now we are going to record the investment in debt instrument through amortized cost. I hope it's clear so far. Is it clear to? Is it clear to everyone? Yes, all participants, please respond to me. Is it clear to everyone? Okay. Before moving on, uh, that we start with the amortized cost. Amortized cost. Let's uh, had. Let's have some basic uh, structure of debenture. Debentures, or we can say that bonds. Debentures. It's a debt instrument. First of all, debenture is a debt instrument. It's a liability instrument. and let's have a, a few details regarding the debentures debentures for debentures we have three different values number one we have par value uh, for which we can say that the principal value par value principal value or we can say that the legal value and sometime we say that the face value number one the par value legal value principal value or the face value another value for debenture is the market value and the third is redeemable value third is the redeemable value as we all know that in shares we have just two values that is the par value and market value in shares in case of the shares we don't have any redeemable value why because we all know that shares are never redeemed shares are never redeemed to the investors they are never returned back to the investors it means the amount of shares will never be redeemed huh? yes there is a condition at the time of liquidation the amount of investment will be redeemed or will be returned back to the investor but in normal situation or in normal circumstances no amount will be redeemed to the shares it means there will be no redeemable redeemable value in case of the shares but yes 
In case of the debenture, if you're talking about the debentures, it means there is a redeemable value because at one point of time, at the end of the five years or the seven years or the 10 years, we are going to back, we are going to take back our amount. It means there will be a redeemable value. Now let's discuss what are these values. Pa value is the legal value. It's a nominal value. It's a face value. It is fixed by law. I have no control on this value. I can't control this one. It's a legislative value. We can't control these values. So pa value, it's a legal value. It's a fixed by law. It is fixed by law. Legislatively, in every jurisdiction, there will be a power value for debenture. What is market value? It's a market value which is based on which is based on demand and supply, which is based on demand and supply. Or we can say that it's a value at which value at which debentures debentures or bonds are traded at which the debentures or bonds are traded. It means that is the market value. For example, I bought a debenture for $100. I bought a debenture for $100 and today the market value is $102 per debenture. So it means now $100 is the power value. That's it. Let's say I bought that debenture on power value. And if these debentures are trading in the market at $102 per share, it means that $102 is the market value. Market value, the value at which the debentures are traded. Now, what is the redeemable value? The value at which, value at which debentures, debentures will be redeemed, redeemed to investors. Debentures will be redeemed to investors. Redeemable value is the redeemable value is the value at which the debentures will be redeemed to the investor. For example, if I have invested $500,000 in company, that is I have purchased the debentures of $500,000. So what I will be getting after five years, the $500,000, absolutely not. I have not made an investment. I have not uh, made an investment that is not to gain any return from this. I'll be expecting a return. If I've invested $500,000, today. So I'll be expecting a higher amount, more amount, amount with profit. Let's say I'll be getting $600,000 at the end of the year five. So it means I invested $5,000, $500,000, but I'll be getting $600,000. So that $600,000 is the redeemable value. So redeemable value is the value uh, at which the debentures will be redeemed to the investors that what amount will be uh, redeeming or returning to their in, to our investors that is known as what redeemable value. Why I'm telling you these things as when we are starting the question, we need to identify these values that in question, we need to identify that what is the power value of the debenture? Number one, we need to identify what is the market value of the venture. And lastly, we need to identify the redeemable value of the debenture. One more thing. If we could not identify the redeemable value, it's okay. It's perfectly fine. It is completely fine. We are not supposed to calculate this redeemable value. We are not bound to calculate the redeemable value. Our question can uh, easily be solved, but we need to identify the power value and the market value. So initial phase, at very initial phase, we need to identify the power value and the market value. I repeat, I repeat. Osama, I'll be repeating my points. I'll be repeating my points. What we are starting, we are making an investment in the debentures. That is the debt instrument. Once we are making an investment in the debt instrument, that instrument, we have three different categories. That is the amortized cost. Right now, we are focusing on amortized cost. And with respect to paper point of view, if I discuss this one, amortized cost is one of the most important area. Hardly examiner ask you a question for fair value through OCI. Examiner hardly ask you a question for fair value through PNL. The favorite area of the examiner is amortized cost. So we will be having a very great practice on it. We will focus more on this one as this is one of the most important area with respect to FR paper. So amortized cost. Before starting this one, what we are doing, we are discussing, we are discussing that uh, there are three values related to debentures. Number one. We have three different values. Number one, the par value. Number two, the market value. And number three, the redeemable value. Now, what is the par value? The par value is the value 
that is fixed by the law legislatively it is fixed by legislation we have no control over it it is completely fixed by the law so that is the legal value principal value principal amount or the face value it is fixed by law number 2 we have a market value of debenture and what is that market value is the value at which the debentures are traded in the market that is a stock exchange we uh, in the question we need to identify that what is the par value of debenture and what is the market value of debenture or let me clear let me summarize let me let me be very specific market value is what the value at which we have bought that debenture what i said what i said the value at which we have purchased that debenture if uh, the debenture's par value is 100 dollar each and we have bought that debenture for 105 dollar each it means that 105 dollar is what that is the market value at which we bought that instrument we bought that debenture we purchased that debenture so market value is the value at we at which we are purchasing that debenture or the market value is the value at which the debentures are traded in the market so there are multiple definitions and what are the redeemable what is the redeemable value redeemable value is the value at which the debentures will be redeemed to the investors for example if you have invested if you have bought the debentures for $400000 and after 5 years you will be getting $600000 so what is that $600000 that is the redeemable value that at the end of the year 5 $600000 will be redeemed to the uh, share uh, investor or the debenture holders i hope it is clear is it clear to everyone osama is it clear to you now uh, let's have a look uh, you may copy down these rules and uh, if i bet you i guarantee you inshallah if you follow these rule uh, i think financial instrument the whole chapter of this financial instrument would be quite easy for you even the financial liability side whatever we will practice in financial asset debt instrument same all kinds of working all all steps will be same for the financial liabilities if you will have a grip on this area you will be the champion of financial liabilities i'll not be i'm just giving you the question and definitely you will be solving that question by yourself you will not be requiring any guidelines any recommendations any suggestions you will not be uh, it, it it will not be necessary for you you will be solving the questions by yourself so we need to focus on this one so four rules are number one coupon rate is applied on par value let me uh, let me be very clear with you what is that coupon rate it's an interest rate what actually the mechanism is uh, once you buy the debenture company will give you a coupon rate let's say the coupon rate is 5% and what is that coupon rate uh, company will say you that once you will make an investment once you will make an investment once you will make an investment we will give you 5% interest rate that is the coupon rate 5% for example if you have invested 1 lakh and company is giving you a coupon rate that is uh, let's say $2000 and amount of interest you will be receiving is known as what coupon rate that is the amount of interest you will receiving mark my words what i'm saying amount of interest received that is the cash received i can say that the coupon rate means the amount of cash received is known as what the coupon rate once i will solve the question i will completely guide you on this respect and will give you a logic behind it that why we are doing this one so coupon rate is applied on the par value once we will start the question will begin with the question first of all we need to identify the coupon rate is applied on the par value that is the face value legal value or the principal value number 2 coupon rate interest is the amount or the interest that is actually received that is in the form of cash you have received in the form of cash you receive that amount coupon what is coupon rate is the amount of cash received is the amount of interest actually received in the form of cash or bank third point is there will be another interest rate will known as what effective rate of interest it's it is also a percentage it is also the interest rate and what is that and where it is applied it is applied on the invested amount once i will start begin with the question don't worry i will explain you each and everything but you need to memorize this one you need to memorize these four points these four points are the crux of this chapter effective rate is applied on the invested amount number 2 effective rate what is that effective rate is the interest that is actually earned and not received that is based on actual concept 
that is based on accrual concept there are two types that is the interest earned and that is the interest received the interest earned is that is the effective rate and the amount of interest received is basically the coupon rate so there will be two interest rate in your question so you don't need to panic you don't need to create a panic you just need to identify there will be two interest rate that is a coupon rate and that and then other one is the effective rate you need to identify the coupon rate and the effective rate and you need to learn out you need to learn out that coupon rate is applied on the par value however the effective rate is applied on the invested amount now let's start with the question once uh, we will uh, start with the question inshallah we have a better idea of it let's start with the question norman bought 10000 debentures at 2% discount on the par value hold on first of all you need to identify whether the question is for financial asset or financial liability how are we going to identify this one once we are making an investment once we are contributing it means it's a financial asset norman bought 10000 it means we are purchasing the ventures we are in making an investment so it means it's a question of financial asset it's a question of financial asset now just close your eyes and memorize that let's have a flashback if you are in a financial asset you have two options either you will make an investment in equity instrument or you will make an investment in debt instrument now what is that what you are purchasing either you are purchasing shares let me know please through chat box you are purchasing ordinary shares of company whether you are purchasing the ordinary shares of the company no we are not purchasing the ordinary shares of the company what we are purchasing we are purchasing the debentures it means we are making an investment in debt instrument it means it's a question of financial asset debt instrument and once we are entered in that one now we need to memorize we need to recall we have three different categories amortized cost fair value through oci and fair value through pnl now from which category we need to solve let's uh, let's continue with that one let's continue with that one and one more thing 10000 debentures were purchased at a 2% discount rate what is that 2% discount that means we have bought that debenture below the par value we all know that uh, shares and debentures could be issued at par value it could be issued at above the par value and it could issue uh, it could be issued at below the par value if it is at par we will say that debentures issued at par but if it is above par we will say the debentures or shares were issued at premium and if it is issued below par we will say the debentures or shares were issued at discount is it clear it's a basic thing it's a basic thing whenever the debentures or shares are issued above par we will say the debentures or shares were issued at premium and if the debentures or shares are issued below par we'll say the debentures or shares are issued at discount and there uh, it is saying that norman bought 10000 debentures at 2% discount on the par value it means that is the debentures were purchased below par that is at the discount and what was the price we will look after we will look at we will look on it look on it okay so par so par value was 100 If the par value is hundred dollar, can anyone let me know the market value of the debenture? Can anyone know the market value of the debenture? Yes, please. Everyone. In the question, in this question, is saying that the debentures were purchased on a two percent discount on the par value. If the par value is hundred, so what is going to be the market value? Everyone, please participate. What is going to be the market value of that debenture? Yes, exactly. It's ninety-eight dollar per debenture. If the hundred dollar is the par value, that is ninety-eight dollar would be the market value. And let me let me tell, let me uh, let me give another answer. If it's written that a two percent premium, if it is written over there that is a two percent premium, then then what is going to be the market value? Excellent, Omar. Very good, Omar. Yes, Taha. Excellent. It means then the market value would be one zero two dollar per debenture. But right now the debenture. Uh, market value is debenture market value is ninety eight dollar per debenture. Okay, let's move on. The debentures are redeemable in four years time. And what is the duration? What is the tenure? What is the maturity period? Is that is the four years at a premium of five percent. It means debentures will be redeemed at a premium. Obviously, uh, if you are making an investment, so, so definitely uh, you will not be agreed on this one. That if I'll be investing ninety eight dollar, so I'll get. And the amount after four years that is ninety eight dollar. 
no definitely you will not be agreed on this one definitely you will be getting huge amount or the more amount so the premium is 5% if the par value is 100 and premium is 5% that is 5 so it means 105 what is that 105 can anyone tell me please can anyone give me the answer of this one that the debenture will be redeemed at a premium of 5% the debentures are redeemable in 4 years time at a premium of 5% yes exactly what is that 0.105 that is the redeemable value what i told you at the very start you need to identify the par value What is the par value? That is hundred dollar. What is the market value? Ninety eight dollar. That is hundred minus two. And what is the redeemable value? That is one zero five. And let me very honest. If you have no idea, if nothing is mentioned regarding the redeemable value, it's completely fine. If redeemable value, if you can identify the redeemable value, it's good. But if you can't find out the redeemable value, it's completely fine. There is no use of redeemable value in the solution. So let's move on. The coupon rate attached to the debenture is four percent. Now four percent is the coupon rate, and the effective rate of interest is five point seven three percent. It means I told you, I told you in this question you will be having two interest rate. That is the coupon rate and the effective rate. You need to identify the coupon rate. That is four percent, and the effective rate is five point seven three percent. And just memorize and just recall the four points. Number one, coupon rate is applied on the par value. You need to memorize this one. Coupon rate is the amount of interest or the cash received. Effective rate is applied on the invested amount, and the fourth point is invested. Uh, sorry, effective rate is the amount that is actually earned. That is the interest actually earned. That is the effective rate. Okay, we will have a, a discussion on this one. Now let's identify the required uh, requirement is that is to prepare the financial extract for four years, or examiner may specifically ask. what amount of interest to be recognized in pnl for 4 years and what amount of financial asset to be reported in balance sheet for 4 years we need to calculate the income statement and balance sheet items but one thing is which category we are going to apply in this question either the amortized cost fair value through oci or fair value through pnl there is a confusion why because in this question it is not mentioned whether the debt instrument is hold uh, for uh, uh, that instrument is uh, what is the intention behind it whether it is hold for sell purpose whether it is hold whether, whether it is hold whether the intention is to hold what is the intention it is not mentioned in this question so please let me know which category are we going to apply in this question yes please answer this one which category are we going to apply in this question mushtaq is saying that fair value through pnl good i need answers i need your opinion yes other participants please participate amortized cost or may amortized cost okay anyone else anyone else amortized cost yes we are going to follow okay mushtaq is saying that there is a objection that default classification is fair value through pnl i agree with you i agree with you mushtaq and one more thing which i clearly mentioned i clearly mentioned that is if the fair value is not given in the question we are going to solve this question through amortized cost because if you say that we need to recognize we need to recognize this question or this investment through fair value through pnl so we need an amount of fair value but there is no fair value given it means at the end of the accounting period if no fair value is given it means we can't recognize this investment as fair value through pnl or even oci we need to recognize this investment as amortized cost mushtaq is it clear to you is it clear to you no doubt the default classification by ifrs 9 is fair value through pnl but if no fair value is at the end of the year at the end of the accounting period is given if no fair value is given it means we will recognize this investment as amortized cost i repeat most of the students get trouble most of the students get panic that from which or uh, through which method of through which category we need to recognize so we are clear on this point if fair value 
at the end of the accounting period is not given, it means we will recognize this investment through amortized cost. So let's start with that one. Uh, for this one, uh, we need to prepare a uh, table. Uh, the table will have certain columns. That is the first column would be years. You make copy uh, in your registers uh, here. Then we will have another column that is the opening balance. Another column we will have that is effective rate or effective interest. Fourth column would be coupon. And the last column would be the closing balance. This table will completely, uh, this uh, once you will prepare this table, you will be having the answer of all kinds of requirements, whether it is the what amount to be reported in PNL or it could be the what amount of uh, uh, what amount to be reported in what amount of reported in balance sheet you will be having all kinds of answers from this table now let's start first of all let me identify uh, the tenor or the maturity or the tenor of this bond or uh, is uh, debenture is how many years that is four years so it means we'll be preparing the table for four years that is year one year two year three and year four we will be preparing the table for four years. Now, what is that opening balance? Opening balance is the amount of investment you have made. The amount of investment you have made in the debenture. And one more thing you need to memorize, you need to recall, you need to capture in your mind. That is, if there is any transaction cost, we will capitalize. We will capitalize that transaction cost in your investment. Remember? in amortized cost and as well as in fair value through OCI. We have gone through in the summary section. We have gone through in the summary section that if we are following the amortized cost of fair value through OCI, so any transaction cost will be capitalized in the amount of investment. So far, there is no amount of transaction cost. So we need to account for the investment. That is the opening balance. And what amount we have invested? What amount we have investment? If we just have a look, that is we have bought 10,000 debenture and the market value of debenture was 98 per debenture. 98 per debenture. It means 10,000 multiplied by 98. That is $9,80,000 is the amount of investment. $9,80,000 is the amount of investment. It means the investor has injected or invested $9,80,000. Is it clear to everyone? Now, the other column is that is effective rate. Now, first of all, let me identify what is the um, uh, percentage of effective per rate is 5.73. The effective rate is 5.73%. And remember the rules, remember the rules, effective rate is applied on the invested amount. And what is that invested amount? It's 9,80,000. So we'll be applying the interest rate that is effective rate 5.73% on the invested amount. So we'll be getting Five six one five four five six one five four. That is the effective rate of interest. I will explain you the logic behind it. First of all, let me complete the schedule. Once I will complete the schedule, I will let you know the logic behind it. And what is the rate of coupon? Coupon rate is a uh, coupon rate is that is uh, four percent. Coupon rate is four percent. And uh, let's remember, recall the rule. Coupon rate is applied on the power value. Coupon rate is applied on the power value. And what is that power value? Power value for debenture is $100 each. And uh, if we measure the power value in total, that is 100 multiplied by 10,000. That means 10,000 multiplied by 100. This will make $1 million. This will make $1 million. And the coupon rate is 4%. That is $1 million multiplied by 4%. This would make, this will make $40,000. Now let me conclude what's going on. Now let me conclude the mechanism of debenture. You invested $80,000 in debentures. Company is offering you a 5.73 effective rate of interest. That is, you will be receiving, you will be earning an amount of interest. That is 56154. Company is giving you a benefit, an edge. And what is that benefit? You will earn 56154 interest amount, but what company is saying will not pay you that amount of interest. Will not pay you that amount of interest. No doubt you have earned an amount of interest, $56,154, but will not be paying you this amount, will not giving you in terms of cash. 
so how i would spend my lifestyle how would i would spend my lifestyle i need an amount of money to spend my lifestyle okay relax we are going to pay you 40000 dollar as a coupon amount repeat repeat okay 9 lakh 80000 was invested 56154 is the amount of interest you will earn but hold on we will not hand over you the total amount of interest we will give you the amount of interest we will pay you the amount of interest we will give you in the form of cash that is 40000 and what about the rest of the amount 16154 what about the rest of the amount we will inject that balance amount and what is that balance amount that is 16154 okay you received an amount you earned an amount of 56154 but you will receiving the amount of cash that is 40000 it means what about the 16000 154 company is asking you company is saying you that we will adjust or we will uh, assemble or we will add this amount to your investment it means you invested 9 lakh 80000 you received you earned an interest of 56154 that means 9 lakh 80000 plus 9 lakh 80000 plus Five six one five four. It means your total investment was ten lakhs thirty six thousand one fifty four, and we are paying you amount of forty thousand. It means now your net investment, your net investment would be nine lakh ninety six thousand one fifty four. What happened? What happened? Wait, wait. You invested nine lakh eighty thousand, but at the end of the year, at the end of the year, now your investment is nine lakh ninety six thousand one fifty four dollar. What does it mean? your invested amount has increased is it great or is it great is it beneficial is it a benefit or is it as a loss it's a benefit for the investor why because once your amount of investment once your amount of investment will increase definitely the amount of interest will also increase is it the case yes if your amount of investment will increase you will see you will demonstrate in this question once your amount of investment will increase definitely higher will be the amount of investment higher will be the amount of interest income so it means you invested 9 like 80000 what company did company uh, said you will earn an amount of interest that is 56154 but we will give you the amount of 40000 that we will pay you 40000 so the net amount of investment at the end of the year at the end of the year would be 996154 dollar that would be the amount of investment at the end of the year if it is the closing balance definitely it is going to be the opening balance of the year too that is 996154 initially you invested 980000 but 16154 in terms of interest is also capitalized in your investment so now your total investment is 996154 again what was the rule effective rate is applied on the invested amount and now in year 2 in year 2 at the end of the year 2 your invested amount is not 980000 but it is 996154 so again so again 5.73 effective rate 5.73 will be applied on the invested amount that is 996154 so the amount of interest you have earned again that is 57079 57079 that is the amount of interest you have earned and again company will pay you the amount of interest and i repeat coupon rate is applied on the par value and remember par value will not be uh, par value will not change in any case is it because par value is fixed by law and if the par value is 100 dollar each it means it will be 100 dollar each by the end of the year four it means the par value is same so the coupon rate is same four percent the coupon amount would also be same that is 40000 dollar again what happened 9 lakh 96000 154 was invested you earned an amount of interest that is 57079 and you received an amount of interest that is 40000 so the net or the closing balance would be 1996154 plus 5709 minus 40000 this will make 10 lakh 13233 Yes, you may round off. You may round off. <clears throat> you may round off. But definitely, if you will round off the figures, uh, you will uh, definitely have a, 
uh, rounding of error at the end of the question. So it's not a big deal. It's not a big deal. Okay. So that is the closing balance. Uh, that is at the end of the year two, your total amount of investment is ten lakh thirteen thousand two hundred and thirty two hundred and thirty three dollars. If this is the closing balance, definitely that is going to be the opening balance for the year three. <clears throat> that is one zero one <clears throat> three two double three. And again, <clears throat> we will receive an interest, and that is uh, earn an interest. And I said effective rate is applied on the invested amount. Now your invested amount is not nine lakh eighty thousand, but you also invested or you also injected the amount of interest in your investment. So it means now your invested amount is one zero one three two double three multiply, and that is five point seven three percent. This will be five eight zero five eight. That is the amount of interest earned, and again. Company will pay you forty thousand interest in the form of cash. So your investment, your closing investment, would be that is one zero three one two nine one. If you can observe this one, as company is not paying off you the whole amount of interest. Although you are earning an amount of interest that is five six one five four, but company is not paying you the whole amount of interest. They are paying you a small portion of this one that is forty thousand, and the balance amount is contributed or added in your invested amount. So what is the benefit behind it? In every year, your investment or the invested amount is increasing, and if the invested amount is increasing, you can clearly demonstrate that the amount of interest in every year. That is, in the first year it was fifty-six thousand, in seven, in second year it is fifty-seven thousand, and in third year it is fifty-eight thousand. So every year your interest income will increase. Now, coming back to the coming to the last year. Now I need your concentration. One zero three one. Two nine one is the opening balance, and again interest effective rate is applied on the invested amount. That is five point seven three percent, and this will make five nine five nine zero nine three zero nine three. Now, let me uh, please uh, concentrate on this screen. Now, what will be the amount of coupon, or what amount will place over here? So, I will just suggest you. Uh, will give you the knowledge. Uh, will give you the logic behind it. But what you have to do that is five nine zero nine three plus one zero three one two nine one one two nine one. This will make ten lakh ninety thousand ten lakh ninety thousand three eighty three three eighty three. What I did, I just had, uh, added this, these two values, and I just put it over there. And why, why have, why have done this? I will give you the explanation for this one. Your invested amount is one zero three one two nine one. You earn an amount of interest five times zero nine three. That is your total investment was ten lakh ninety thousand three eighty three. And in the last year, this is the last year. And don't forget, if this is the last year, it means the company will be paying off you the whole amount. Now there will be no balance. There will be no closing balance in your accounts. Reason is because that is the redeemable period. That is the redeemable year. Year four is the period in which the company will be paying back your whole amount. Whatever the balance amount is, the company will pay you back the whole amount. There will be no closing balance. So it means whatever the balance is, that is ten lakh ninety thousand three hundred three. This whole amount will be paid back to you. It means if that whole amount is paid back to you, what will be the closing balance? That would be zero. That would be zero. So always remember, whenever we are preparing the schedule, whenever we are preparing the table. So last year, in the last year, the amount paid by the company would be the sum of the invested amount plus the interest earned. That is ten lakh ninety thousand three eighty three. That whole amount is paid to the investor. So the amount would be the sum of investment plus interest earned. How it could be five seven zero eight zero? Let me give you an analysis. Another analysis. Just uh, just have a look on it. Just have a look uh, look over here. If I just calculate the total amount, the total amount received by the investor in the four years time, 
in this four years time, the total amount received by the investor, just check it out. That is the column, uh, coupon column. In the year one, investor received 40,000 in terms of cash. In year two, investor received 40,000 in terms of cash. In year three, investor received 40,000 in terms of cash. And in the year four, whatever the amount was invested in the company, whatever the investor has invested, whatever the balance amount was, company redeemed all that amount, company paid back that all amount, that is 10 like 90,000, is it? So it means in the four years duration, in a four years time period, please let me know, calculate this one, that how much of amount the investor received, actually received, please let me know about this one. Can you guys calculate me for this? Can you guys calculate this column total? Can you guys please calculate this? The total amount the investor will receive, the total amount the investor will receive in a four years time period. That is the 40,000 plus 40,000 plus 40,000 plus 10 lakh 90,000. The total amount that the investor will be receiving That is the 12 lakh 10,000, is it? 12 lakh 10,383. 383. That is the total amount the investor received, is it? 12 lakh 10,383. That is the amount received in a four years duration. That is the total amount that he received. And now let me know how much he has invested Initial, initially, how much he has invested. Can you know me? Can you can you please let me know? Exactly, exactly. Nine lakh eighty thousand. Just look at the calculation. Nine lakh eighty thousand. Is it total amount the investor received is 10, uh, 12 lakh ten thousand, and the amount which he has invested that is nine lakh eighty thousand. Can you calculate the difference for me, please? Can you calculate the difference in these two? It's twenty three thousand. To sorry, two lakh thirty thousand. It's two lakh thirty thousand. 383 and can you please let me know if i'm making an investment of 9 lakh 80000 and if i will be getting 12 lakh 10000 what i said i invested 9 lakh 80000 and i'll be getting 12 lakh 10000 so what is the difference amount is what will be the amount of difference what is that difference amount what is that actually what is that amount what is that actually 2 lakh 30000 profit anyone else zero excellent excellent interest it's an amount of interest for example if you have uh, borrowed an amount from bank 500000 and you'll be, you'll be return, returning back that amount after 4 years that is 6 lakh 50000 you borrowed 4 lakh after 4 years you will be you will be uh, paying back 6 lakh so it means the difference amount is that. What is that difference amount? That is the amount of interest. So it means what is that? Two lakh thirty thousand. It's an amount of interest. Can we verify this amount of interest? Yes, we can verify this amount of interest. Please calculate this column. Can we have a total of this column? Can we have a total of this column, please? Can we have a total of this column? Yes, that is. 2,30,383, 2,30,383, that is the column. It means, what does it mean? It means if the investor has invested 9,80,000, he'll be getting, that investor will be getting 12,10,000 by the end of the year four. It means in a four year duration, he'll be getting 12,10,000. And what is the amount of interest he will be receiving? He will be receiving that as 2,30,000. But as per the equal concept, we cannot recognize this amount of interest in one year. So we will be recognizing that amount of interest in every year, in every year. So we will recognizing, we will be recognizing the amount of interest in every year. That is 56154. 57079 in year two, 58058 in year three, and 59093 in year four. Are you getting the point? It means the amount of interest to be recognized in PNL that is 56154. Yeah, always remember, always remember, we recognize revenues and expenses on the base of actual concept and not on the base of cash base. 
we never recognizes revenue and expenses on the basis of cash so never ever think about it so we will recognize the interest income of 40000 no we have earned an amount of interest is 56154 no doubt we have received an amount of interest that is 40000 but we never record what we received we record what we earned is it clear to everyone is it clear to everyone mushtaba is it clear to Mushtaba, is it clear to you, please? So it means, uh, it means now I'm just summing up. First of all, the first requirement the examiner can ask you amount of interest income to be recognized in year one, amount of interest income to be recognized in year one. So the answer would be five, six, one, five, four. Is it clear? And if examiner asks you what amount of investment to be reported in balance sheet at the end of the year one, the answer would be 996154 will be recorded in balance sheet as an asset and this will be recognized as a non-current asset. Is it clear to you guys? Is it clear to you guys? Okay. Now answer me, answer me that what amount of clearly, please, uh, please listen to me very clear, carefully. Listen to me very carefully. What amount of interest income, what amount of interest income to be recognized in year three? What amount of interest income to be recognized in year three in PNL? What will be the amount of interest income? Exactly. Very good. Exactly. That is 58058. 58058. Excellent. And what amount of investment income? What amount, sorry, what amount of investment to be reported in balance sheet in year three or at the end of the year three? What amount of? Excellent. So, excellent. Perfect. Perfect. That is 1031291. That will be the amount of investment to be reported in balance sheet. Now answer me one more thing. Would it be a current asset or a non-current asset? Would it be recognized as a current asset or a non-current asset? No, man. This will be recognized as a current asset. Yes. Reason is we are going, we will be taking all amount in the next 12 months. So it means by the end of the next 12 month, by the end of the next 12 month, we will be getting all that amount. So it means at the end of the year three, we'll recognize that investment exactly will be settled in one year or within one year. So it means 1031291 will be recognized as a current asset. Is it clear to everyone? Okay, if it is clear to everyone, uh, one more thing, uh, just for the sake of your concepts, uh, uh, how we, uh, although this is not the part of your course or this is not the part of your requirement, uh, examiner is not going to ask you about this one, but you must know that uh, what's happening behind that, what entries are prepared. Uh, so I'll be preparing the entries for the year one so that your concepts, your confusions might get cleared in this, uh, through these entries. So uh, I'm preparing the entry for the year one. We invested the amount that is nine like eighty thousand. So we'll be preparing the entry that is investment debit and cash or bank credit with the amount of nine like eighty thousand. And then at the end of the year one, we uh, earned an amount of interest five six one five four. So what will be the entry behind this one? Uh, the entry that is prepared on the back hand is investment debit and interest income credit why investment debit we are recognizing this interest or we are adding this interest to your investment amount that is 56154 56154 and then we received an amount of interest so what happened in that situation your amount of investment again decreased once you earned an amount of interest, your investment amount was increased. So we just debited the investment account. And once you received an amount of interest, it means now your investment will decrease. So investment account will be credited by $40,000. 
by $40,000. And what will be debited? That is bank will be debited by $40,000. Are you getting the point? It means, it means at the end of the year one, these two entries will be prepared. Number one, we will be recognizing the interest income that will be recorded in PNL. That is the income statement. And whatever the amount of cash we are receiving, we will not recognize that as an income because we never account for income or revenues or expenses on a cash basis. We always recognize revenues and expenses on an accrual basis. Are these entries cleared? I repeat, entries are not the part of your course. Examiner is not going to test you in FR with respect to these entries, but these entry will help you a lot for a conceptual understanding of the table which we have prepared in previous slide. Okay, moving on. Uh, another question we have, that is question number seven and uh, this question, uh, and in this question, we will account for Yes, Mushtaba. Mushtaba, exactly. You are perfectly right. Uh, I can make you, I can, uh, uh, one more thing which I can do here. Uh, that is 12103383. If I can have a breakup of this one, so we have a breakup of 40,000, that is the coupon amount. Sorry for this one. That is 40,000 is the coupon amount. Rest is, uh, if I deduct, uh, can you please make a difference of it? 12103383 minus 40,000. What will be the balance amount? Can you please? Do it for me. Can you make a difference of it? Can you calculate the difference for this one, please? One, two, one, zero, three, eight, three minus. That is 40,000. That is double one seven zero three eight three. Double one seven zero three eight three. And what is that double one seven zero three eight three? That is basically the redeemable value. That is basically the redeemable value. How, um, if we have a look on this question, so we were having a, a redeemable value or the redeemable was at 5% premium. It means the redeemable value would be $105 per share. Oh, sorry, per debenture, it means 105 multi flab at 10,000. So this will around make, uh, that is 1 lakh 15,000. 1 lakh 15,000, that is around the redeemable value. That is basically the redeemable value. So in the last year, in the last year, sorry, uh, I made an error for this one. That is, I want to break out this one. That is the last payment. Last payment which we are receiving, that is 40,000 is the coupon amount and 10 lakh 90,000 minus 10 lakh 90,000 minus 40,000. It means the difference is 10 lakh 50,000. The difference is 10 lakh 50,000. And what is that 10 lakh 50,000? That is the redeemable value. And how can we calculate the redeemable value? That is 105 multiply by 10,000. And if you will calculate this amount, you will make 10 lakh 50,000. So in last year, in last year, you are getting two payments. That is number one, the coupon amount and the rest is, and the rest is the redeemable value. In last year, you are getting two payments. That is the coupon amount. And the another one is that is the redeemable value. So that is 10 lakh 90,000 is basically the coupon plus redeemable value. So always remember whenever you are in the last year, so you will be getting two payments. That is the coupon plus redeemable value. Mushtaba, is it clear? And this 10 lakh, 10, uh, 12 lakh, 10,000, definitely. This will, uh, this includes both the principal amount and interest. And this 10, 12 lakh, 10,000 will include both. That is the principal amount plus interest. So now let's move on to the question number seven. On 1st January 20X1, Tokyo bought a one lakh dollar five percent bonds or for ninety five thousand dollar. Remember, one more thing. We bought. It means we purchase. If you are purchasing, is it the financial asset or financial liability? Is this the financial asset or the financial liability? Yes, everyone. Is the question for financial asset or the financial liability? 
it's a financial asset very good we bought it means we are purchasing it means we are making an investment and again what we are purchasing we are purchasing bonds so it means it's a financial asset debt instrument again we need to recall if we are making an investment in the debt instrument we have three different categories amortized cost fair value through oci fair value through pnl we need to account for we need to check it out whether we need to classify the investment from which category through which category so now let's read out the question and net and uh, let's identify the core values number 1 tokyo bought a dollar 1 lakh 5% bond for 95000 dollar can you please identify what is actually the amount of investment is is it 1 lakh dollar or 95000 dollar what actually the amount of investment is what actually the amount of investment is yes that is 95000 dollar that is tokyo bought 1 lakh dollar share debentures that is the value of debenture was 1 lakh dollar but we bought it for 95000 dollar so it means the market value or the investment is 95000 dollar and what is that 1 lakh dollar can you please let me know what is that 1 lakh dollar yes that is the par value it means the par value of the venture was 1 lakh dollar but we bought it for 95000 dollar again the ventures were bought for discount it means uh, we bought that venture for 95000 dollar but the par value was was 1 lakh dollar and what is this 5% always remember whenever we we have a percentage over there that is uh, indicating the coupon rate that is indicating the coupon rate always remember 5% bond whenever it is written that uh, company bought 12% bond 6% bond 5% bond so whatever the percentage is given that is the coupon rate that is the coupon rate again let's move on incurring an acquisition cost of $2000 what is that $2000 can you please let me know incurring a acquisition cost of $2000 what is that $2000 that is the transaction cost that is the transaction cost and remember remember if you are adopting if you are adopting amortized cost amortized cost in case of the amortized cost we will capitalize that transaction cost if you are using fair value through oci we will be capitalizing that acquisition cost or the transaction cost but if if you are uh, using the fair value through pnl to definitely so definitely we are not going to capitalize that transaction cost we will expense that expense out that transaction cost but so far let's read out the question and we need to identify which method or which category we need to follow yes the recordings will be available to you don't worry uh, you may contact to the admin or you may also uh, leave your message in group whatsapp group okay now let's move on uh, interest is received annually in a years the bond uh, will be redeemed at a premium of 5960 that is the redeemable value and at the very start of the question i at the start of this topic i told you if the redeemable value is given to you it's completely fine but if it is not given to you we have no use of it in the previous question uh, for requirement purposes redeemable value was completely irrelevant it is given in the question it's good but if it is not given we are not supposed to calculate the redeemable value okay uh, on the the effective rate of interest is 8% and the coupon rate is definitely 5% the fair value of the bond was as follows now the fair value is given at the end of the end uh, at the end of the reporting date that is on 31st december 20x1 and 31st december 20x2 the market value or the fair value was 1 lakh 10000 on 31st december 20x1 and 1 lakh 4000 dollar on 31st december x2 required now what is the requirement explain with the calculation how the bond will have to be accounted for for all for all relevant years and the relevant years is uh, that is uh, for how many years for how many years uh, this was tokyo bought uh, five mean that is for 3 years that is for 3 years okay 
that is uh, the redeemable date is uh, redeemable value date is on 31st december 20x3 and we bought and we bought an investment or we have made an investment on 20x1 so it means 20x1 20x2 and 20x3 it means uh, the tenure is for 3 years so we need to account for this for 3 years so now let's see uh, the requirement a is tokyo plan to hold the bond until the redemption day which classification we are going to opt we, which classification we are going to opt if we are uh, if we are solving the question for required a if tokyo plan to hold the bond until the redemption date which category we are going to follow that is the amortized cost and b tokyo may sell the bond if the possibility of uh, possibility of an investment with a higher return arises oci tokyo plan to trade the bond in the short term pnl is it clear to everyone so it means there are the possible wordings which the examiner can use in their question so you need to uh, identify you need to memorize these kind of wordings through which the examiner can uh, ask you that is you may use uh, amortized cost of fair value through oci or through fair value pnl so we will solve this question from all these categories let us start with one that is a uh, through amortized cost how we are gonna to how we are gonna to record how we are gonna to calculate the amount or the values for financial statement through amortized cost again we are going to prepare the schedule or the table number one uh, we will having a column of year number two opening balance number two effective rate number three coupon and last is that is closing balance here we are going to record we are can we are uh, calculating just for three years opening balance can anyone calculate or can anyone let me know the opening balance or the investment amount can anyone of you calculate the amount of investment would it be ninety five thousand dollar would it be ninety five thousand dollar mushtaba no it would be ninety seven thousand dollar mushtaba we are using amortized cost and remember please this is very common the students makes a blunder in the exams and, and specifically examiner identifies in their report that student make a blunder in case of the amortized cost they do not capitalize the transaction cost so please remember 97000 would be the invested amount or the investment so the table will start with investment plus transaction cost is it clear now what is that amount of uh, sorry what is the effective rate of interest that is eight percent and what is the rate coupon coupon rate is five percent always remember effective rate is applied on the invested amount and right now the invested amount is ninety seven thousand invested amount is ninety seven thousand so ninety seven thousand multiply by eight percent that is it will make double seven six zero and remember the rule rules that is the coupon rate is applied on the par value and what is the par value the par value is one hundred thousand dollar par value is one hundred thousand dollar and one lakh multiplied by five percent this will make five thousand is it clear to everyone so the formula is opening balance plus effective rate minus coupon rate is equal to the closing balance is it clear to everyone yes all participants is it clear to everyone So the closing balance would be double nine seven six zero double nine seven six zero that would be the closing balance if this is the closing balance definitely is going to be the opening balance of double nine seven six zero multiply by eight percent that is the effective rate this will make seven nine eight one and coupon amount is five thousand coupon amount is five thousand so the closing balance would be one zero two one zero two seven four one one zero two seven four one if this is the closing balance definitely this is going to the opening balance one zero two seven four one and effective rate is eight percent that will make eight two one nine eight two one nine and the total amount total amount is one zero two seven four one plus eight two one nine 
this will make 1 lakh 10,000 1 lakh 10,960 that is the total amount which the investor will be receiving in the year 3 or at the end of the year 3. Is it clear to everyone? And the closing balance would be 0. <clears throat> is it clear to everyone? Now, if I ask you a question that what amount, what amount of interest income to be recognized in PNL for year two? What amount of interest income to be recognized in PNL for year two? Exactly, 7981. And if I ask you what amount of investment to be recorded in financial position? At what amount the investment to be recognized in financial position at the end of the year two? At the end of the year two, 102741, that would be the amount of investment that is asset. And will it be recognized as a non current asset? <clears throat> no, this will be recognized as a current asset. Is it clear to everyone? <clears throat> so, the possible requirements that an examiner may ask you. That is the amount of interest to be recognized in PNL and the amount of uh, investment to be reported in balance sheet. These are the two possible requirements that an examiner may ask you uh, with respect to this question. Is it clear to everyone? So we have solved this question through amortized cost. And now we are going to solve this particular question through fair value OCI. But my question is, my question is uh, fair value of debentures were given in the question, but we completely ignored these fair value in amortized cost. Is it true? We didn't focus, we even didn't uh, uh, accounted for this fair value or the market value in our schedule. And always remember, always remember if the market value or the fair value of the debenture is given, an examiner is specifically asking you for the amortized cost we will definitely ignore these fair value. Always remember, you can make a point on this one. You will never ever consider the fair value in amortized cost. There is no, there is no calculation for fair value in amortized cost. So why these fair values are given? These fair values are given for requirement A, oh sorry, B and C. These fair values are relevant for requirement B and C. This is not relevant for amortized cost. So always remember, examiner may give you certain fair values at reporting date and uh, the examiner will ask you to report the PNL amount according to amortized cost. So remember, you will not account for the fair value if you are solving the question from amortized cost. So please remember this one. We will not account for the fair value in case of the amortized cost. Now, let's move on. Now, how we are going to calculate the amount of interest income and the amount of investment to be reported in balance sheet if we are following the fair value through OCI. Now let's continue with this one. First of all, if the question is for fair value through OCI, you have to prepare this amortized cost table. I repeat, even though the examiner is not asking for amortized cost, even though examiner is not asking you to prepare the amortized cost schedule, examiner is not asking you, examiner is not requiring you to give the amount of amortized cost PNL or anything else. Still, you have to prepare this table. Why? The logic or the reason I will give you. But first of all, we will prepare another table, but it will completely be based on the amortized cost. Let's have a look on it. Now we are going to calculate the amount or the values through fair value OCI. First of all, year number one, first column. Number two, the opening balance. Number three, <clears throat> effective rate. Number four, the coupon. Number five, the closing balance. Number six, the fair value. And last column is that is fair value gain or loss. Fair value gain or loss. Now let's start with one. Year one, the opening balance was 97,000. And remember, transaction cost is capitalized in both ways. 
either you adopt the amortized cost or you go for fair value through oci it means transaction cost will always be capitalized it will always be capitalized it means opening balance is 97000 effective rate is 8% that is 7760 we have already calculated this amount coupon amount is 5000 so the closing balance was 99760 Now, what is the fair value at the end of the year one? This uh, the fair value was one lakh ten thousand. So fair value is one lakh ten thousand. Now let me know. The amount of investment was nine nine seven six zero, but the market fail value is one lakh ten thousand. Now let me know the market value is increasing or decreasing. Yes, market value or the fair value is increasing or decreasing. Yes, it's increasing. It's increasing by ten thousand, ten thousand two forty, ten thousand two forty. It means it's a fair value gain. It's a fair value gain. It's a fair value gain. It's a fair value gain of ten thousand two forty. And we know that if you are following the fair value through OCI, that gain will not be recognized in PNL, but that gain will be recognized in OCI. Okay, now let's move on to year two. Year two. Now, what will be the opening balance? The opening balance is gonna to be one lakh ten thousand. Why? Because we have measured the investment at its market value. So, if we last year, that is at the end of the year one, we measured the investment at one lakh ten thousand. Now, the opening balance would not be nine nine seven six zero, but it would be one lakh ten thousand. Is it clear to everyone? Is it clear to everyone? Can you can you guys make this one? Okay, now moving on. Now let me know whether the company will give you an interest on the market value. Absolutely not. Whatever the amount you have invested, you will get the return. You will get the interest on that invested amount rather than on the market value. Are you getting my point? It means we will not calculate the effective rate on one lakh ten thousand. We will calculate the effective rate on double nine seven six zero. So therefore, we will calculate the effective rate, effective amount from the above table. That is seven nine eight one. Don't dare to calculate the amount of interest on one lakh ten thousand. One lakh ten thousand is the market value, and no company will give you interest on that market value. Company will give you interest on the amount which you have invested. And remember the rule which I told you. effective rate is calculated on the invested amount and not on the market value amount is it clear to everyone now can you make a difference why i have prepared the amortized schedule why i have told you that you need to prepare the amortized schedule without amortized schedule without amortized cost table you cannot calculate the amount of interest you cannot calculate the amount through fair value oci and again the amount of coupon rate would be same that is 1 lakh 10000 that is 1 lakh 10000 plus 7981 minus 5000 this will make 1 lakh 12981 Nine eighty one. Now let me know the market value at the end of the year two. At the end of the year two, what will be the market value? What is the market value? It's one lakh four thousand. It's one lakh four thousand. It means the closing balance is one lakh twelve thousand nine eighty one, but the market value is one lakh four thousand. Is it increasing or decreasing? Yes. Is it increasing or decreasing? Is it the gain or loss? Yes. It's a gain. Oh, sorry. It's a loss of. Eight nine eight nine eight one. It's a loss of eight nine eight one. And remember, the loss, uh, the fair value loss, will not be recognized in PNL. It will be recognized in OCI. Yes, it's a loss of eight nine eight one. Now let's finalize the year three. The opening balance would be one lakh four thousand. Again, the interest we will getting or earning. Would be eight nine eight nine sorry eight two one nine 
the coupon amount would be 5000 the closing balance would be 1 lakh 4000 plus 28219 minus 5000 this will make 107219 and the fair value now the question arises the fair value at the end of the year 3 in question if you see if you see there is no fair value given at the end of the year 3 now what will be the fair value at the end of the year 3 so the fair value at the end of the year 3 or i can say that the fair value at the date of maturity would be the same as the redeemable value i repeat what i said the fair value at the end of the maturity the fair value at the end of the maturity or the maturity date would be the same as it is the redeemable value because company if the company has decided a redeemable value that would be the market value at the end of the year three or the maturity date are you getting a point so it means at the end of the year three the uh, market value or the fair value would be equal to the redeemable value and what is that redeemable value let's have a look on it it's saying the bonds will be redeemed at a premium of 5960 over the nominal value and what was the nominal value nominal value was 1 lakh plus 5960 is the premium so the redeemable value would be 1 lakh 5000 1 lakh 5000 960 1 lakh 5000 960 that is going to be the fair value at the end of the year year 3 so are we having a gain or loss yes are we having a gain or loss yes sir we are having a loss of 1259 1259 we are having a loss of one two five nine and again remember now what requirements can examiner ask you number one uh, if i ask you under fair value through oci listen to my question very carefully under fair value through oci what amount of what amount of interest to be recognized in year two what amount of interest to be recognized in year two Seven nine eight one. Excellent. If I ask you what amount of gain or loss to be recognized in year two, eight nine eight one. Very good. And where it will be recognized in PNL or OCI? Eight nine very good in oci is it clear to everyone so i repeat if examiner ask you a question that identify or calculate the interest to be recorded in uh, pnl uh, as per oci fair value oci so you have to prepare an amortized cost table you have to prepare an amortized cost table and just prepare the amortized cost table you will get to know that what will be the amount of effective rate and what will be the amount of coupon and on that on that basis you will prepare the another table that would be fair value through oci now let's uh, have a final requirement that is c part that is fair value through pnl how we are going to recognize the investment through fair value through pnl so let's prepare the table for this one here the opening balance and uh, number two, the effective rate, coupon, and the closing balance. Number one, first of all, let's uh, uh, look at the question. What is saying Tokyo plan to create the bond in the short term and it's selling it for its fair value on 1st January 20X2. It means they have disposed of the debenture on 1st January 20X2. Uh, so it means First of all, we will have 20x1. Now, what will be the opening balance? Can anyone tell me this one? What will be the amount of opening balance? Exactly, you may have. Perfect. It would be 95,000 and not 97,000. Why? Because we are following the fair value through PNL and under fair value through PNL, we never capitalize the transaction cost. So it means so it means the opening balance would be 95,000 opening balance would be 95000 and what is the effective rate is 8% so we will have an amount of interest that is 95000 multiply by 8% this will be 7600 
coupon amount was 5000 it means the closing balance would be 97600 but remember we are using what fair value through pnl it means we will measure or record that investment at its fair value now let's evaluate the fair value at 31st december 20x1 that was 1 lakh 10000 1 lakh 10000 is the fair value let me know is it the gain or loss is it the gain or loss yes it's a gain of gain of what fair value gain it's a gain of how much gain is it that is 12400 it's a fair value gain and where this gain will be recognized this gain will be recognized in pnl remember this is not a disposal gain it's not a dis it's a fair value gain it's a fair value gain of 12400 and it will be recognized in pnl another uh, what the examiner has said that they have disposed of this uh, debentures on 1st January 20X2. That is soon after that 31st December 20X1. So it means they have disposed of their uh, disposed of their debentures. What was the value of debenture at the end of 31st December 20X1? It means in balance sheet, this was recorded at the value of 1 lakh 10,000. And on 1st January, 20x3 x2 it was disposed of but no sales proceed has been given so it is complete it is quite obvious that if at the end of the day 31st december the market value is 1 lakh 10000 so definitely the market value at a very next day would also be 1 lakh 10000 so the gain on disposal would be zero is it clear to everyone so sales proceed is obviously of the market value and if no sales proceed is given in the question so it could reasonably assume that the market value at the end of 31st december 20x1 would be the same as on 31st on 1st january 20x2 so that is going to the sales proceed so if examiner ask you the gain on disposal this would be zero fair value gain or loss at the end of the year one that would be 12,400 will be recognized in PNL. Is it clear to everyone? Examiner might uh, give you uh, the sales proceed. For example, for instance, the examiner might, uh, uh, might have given you the sales proceed. The, on first gen, on very 20X2, company disposed of the debentures for $1,8,000. So it means we have calculated the loss on disposal, but right now, if no sales proceed is given, it could reasonably be assumed that the market value on the last day would be the market value on first day, that is on the first January. Okay, now we have another question, that is question number eight. A company invested $5,000 in 10% loan notes. Loan notes are repayable at a premium of after three years. That is the tenure or the duration is three years. Effective rates. Okay. First of all, let me tell me, uh, uh, let me tell uh, what is that 10%? What is that 10%? 10%. What is that 10? It's a coupon rate. It's a coupon rate. And what is that 5,000? That is the amount of investment. Company invest $5,000. It means that is the amount company have injected or invested the loan notes are repayable at a pre, uh, at a period of three years. Effective rate of interest given in the question that is twelve percent. The company intends to collect the contractual cash flow, which consists solely of repayment of interest and capital, and have therefore chosen to record the financial asset at the amortized cost. Seriously speaking, if this sentence or this phrase is not given, you can clearly identify what examiner is saying that company has decided, company has intended to collect the contractual cash flow, which consists solely the principal and interest, which clearly indicates that company will hold that investment until the maturity date. It means we will classify this investment as for amortized cost. Is it clear to everyone? Is the question clear to everyone? Now, in that question, one assumption you may take that is the invested amount is 5000 and this is also the par value. If the par value is not mentioned separately, it means the company 
has issued debentures or the company has invested in the debenture whose par value and the market value is same so it means the invested amount is $5000 and the par value is $5000 so coupon amount will be calculated on the par value and effective rate of interest will be calculated on the invested amount is it clear to everyone is this question clear to everyone you can have the screenshot of this question and you may practice this question by your own okay uh, please complete this table can you please complete this table uh, this is the question which i have extracted uh, from another accounting body and uh, examiner may ask you as a drag and drop question that complete the following table that means if i discuss with you that is what is the business model in amortized cost what is basically the business model is it uh, hold to collect and sell or is it for sell purposes or is it hold to collect yes for amortized cost it is hold to collect exactly it is hold to collect that is hold to collect and what about fair value through oci it is hold to collect and you may also sell and for fair value through pnl it is it is specifically for sell purposes kindly please complete this table uh, options are given below you may use this options to complete this table complete this table please yes have you done it uh, cash flows uh, cash flows uh, but in case of amortized cost in case of amortized cost investor is expecting both the principal and interest is it in fair value through oci the intention of the investor that is to collect the cash flows that is principal and interest but in case of the fair value pnl that is no condition it means investor is not expecting any interest or investor is not going to wait for the maturity date categories amortized cost we have seen this amortized cost we have seen this amortized cost in debt instrument but fair value through oci and fair value through pnl this was available in equity as well as in debt initial measurement amortized cost is initially recorded at fair value plus transaction cost plus transaction cost fair value through oci it is equally recorded sorry uh, amortized cost is not recorded at the fair value uh, uh, it is recorded at the fair value plus transaction cost fair value through oci it is also recorded at the fair value plus transaction cost but in fair value through pnl we recognize the investment we recognize the investment at fair value no transaction cost is capitalized subsequent measurement subsequently we measure at amortized cost but in fair value through oci we measure the investment at fair value and likewise in fair value through pnl we measure the investment at fair value is this table clear to everyone a possible question is expected in your exams so you need you have to be mentally prepared for this one okay now coming back to the financial liabilities uh, whatever we have discussed in the financial asset debt instrument exactly the same scenario is but one uh, major difference is uh, we will make uh, once we will start the table once we will start the table the uh, table will start from net proceeds what is that net proceeds that is the amount received whatever the amount we have received minus any transaction cost that is the major difference in financial asset what we have done we uh, capitalized that transaction cost we added that transaction cost in the amount of investment but in case of the financial liabilities we don't add up the transaction cost but we deduct that transaction cost that is if we have received the amount of uh, uh, from the investor that is 500000 and we have incurred the amount of transaction cost that is 10000 
so we will so we will deduct that ten thousand dollar from five hundred thousand. That will uh, the table will start from four lakh ninety thousand dollar. So that is the major uh, change in financial liabilities. Rest all the things are very simple, and these are uh, all. Uh, which we have already discussed now let's start with that question norma issued now first of all you need to identify whether the question is for financial aspect or financial liability company is not making an investment what company is doing company is issuing the debentures the redeemable preference shares the loan notes if company issues that redeem, uh, uh, redeemable preference shares or debentures or bonds it means company is not making an investment it is basically not the question for financial asset but it's a question of financial liabilities so you have to identify the question that whether the question is for financial asset or financial liabilities okay let's move on 20000 redeemable debentures were issued at their 100 dollar par value it means the debentures were issued at 100 dollar and that is the par value as well incurring issue cost that is the transaction cost of 1 lakh dollar debentures are redeemable at a premium of 5% that is the redeemable value if it is given in the question it's good to go if it is not we are not bothered about it Four years is the time period, and coupon rate is twelve percent. Effective rate is four point five eight percent, and the requirements are saying what amount to be recorded in P and L, what amount should be recorded in balance sheet. Let's prepare the table. The same table will be prepared for this one. Uh, year, the opening balance, effective rate, coupon, and the closing balance. But one thing is. that here the effective rate is not the amount of interest earned but that is the interest expense coupon rate is not the amount of interest received that is basically the interest paid that is the major difference you need to identify because now it's a liability case it's a liability case now uh, for many how many years that is four years that is year 1 year 2 year 3 and year 4 close opening balance what is going to be the opening balance company issued 20000 redeemable debentures at 100 dollar so it means the amount is uh, 2 20000 multiply by 100 it means company will receive the amount of 20000 multiply by 100 that is company will receive the amount of 2 million dollar but company will make a transaction cost of 1 lakh dollar it means the net proceeds would be 19 lakh dollar 1.9 million dollar that is 19 lakh dollar so the table will start with 19 lakh dollar effective rate will be applied on this 19 lakh dollar and effective rate is 4.58% 4.58% that is 4.58% this will make 87020 what does it mean <clears throat> you borrowed 19 lakh on that borrowed amount you have to incur an interest expense of 87020 will you be paying the whole amount of interest no i will not be paying the whole amount of interest so the coupon rate is 2% and is always applied on the par value and what is that par value par value is 100 multiply by 20000 that is 2 million so 2 million multiply by 2 million multiply by 2% that is the coupon amount is 40000 what's going on there you borrowed 19 lakh amount of interest that you will be recognizing 87000 but actually the amount interest you are paying to your investor is 40000 now what is the closing liability that is 19 lakh plus 87020 minus 40000 it means the closing liability would be 1947020 if this is the closing liability definitely it is going to be the opening for the next year 1947020 again the effective rate will be applied on this one 4.58 percentage that is 89174 Eight nine one seven four forty percent is the coupon amount. Forty percent is the coupon amount. So the closing liability, closing balance would be one double nine six one nine four six one nine four. 
this is going to be the opening balance one double nine six one nine four and again effective rate would be applied 4.58 percent that is 91,425 minus 40,000 The closing liability would be 2047, 2047, 620. 2047620. Again, effective rate of 4.58% is applied. Two zero four seven six two zero. Multiply by 4.58%, that is 93781. And in the last year, we all know that company will redeem the whole amount, whatever the balance is, that is the total balance would be 2047620. It means 21414. Double zero is the total amount will be paid in the last year and then the closing liability would be zero. So that is the amortized cost. And uh, if examiner asks you the amount of interest expense to be recognized in year two. Amount of interest expense to be recognized in year two. What amount of interest expense to be recognized in year two? That is eight nine one seven four eight nine one seven four if examiner asks you the amount of financial liability to be reported in balance sheet at the end of the year two amount of financial liability to be reported at the end of the year two one double nine six one nine four and will it be the current liability or the non-current liability Will it be the current liability or the non-current liability? Will it be the current liability or the non-current liability at the end of the year two? Mushtaba, at the end of the year two. At the end of the year two. One double nine six one nine four. Will it be the current liability or the non-current liability? Yes. It is going to be the non-current liability. We will recognize this as a non-current liability. Is it clear to everyone? So it is the same as we have already done in the financial asset. But now the terms will uh, now the terms will change. First, we will recording as an interest income. Now we'll record as a finance cost as the interest expense. We will recognizing that as a financial asset. Now we'll recognize as a financial liability. But the major difference was that there the transaction cost was capitalized. It was uh, uh, that was added into the amount of investment. But here, the transaction cost will not be capitalized. We will deduct that transaction cost from the amount, from the invested amount or the borrowed amount. Can you guys please try uh, read out this question? Can you guys please read out this question? And uh, just read out this question and ask me if there is any issue or the problem in this question. Read out this question. If you find any problem, please let me know.
Yes. Is there any problem? Uh, if you wish to solve this question, please uh, solve this question. And if you face any difficulty, kindly let me know. Yes. Uh, have you guys done with that? So guys, have you done with that? We are having a shortage of time. Uh, so one thing uh, which is left in this chapter, that is the convertible bonds. And that is uh, also the important area for this one. Uh, inshallah, if uh, I'll get the time for this one, uh, we'll make a video or a recording for this uh, small part of this chapter that is the convertible bonds. And we'll inshallah post uh, it to the WhatsApp group or the other YouTube channel. So you can uh, watch uh, that video and uh, can clear your all doubts. I hope uh, this session, uh, this session uh, might be successful or this session might be helpful or fruitful for you. And uh, if you have any concern or queries, uh, you definitely can uh, contact me. You can definitely discuss this one with me. Uh, I wish you a very best of luck for your exams, for your papers. May you all be very successful in your September exams. Thank you so much.